Welcome to Nimmin Live, the number one place on the internet to learn about YouTube, network with other content creators, and have an awesome time doing it. Today, I have a special guest that is joining us live here. My brother from the same mother, D. D. Welcome back to another stream. How you doing? Welcome back to the studio. The studio. Welcome back to the studio here for the uh, for another stream today. So we have a yeah. really exciting stream in store for you today. We're super pumped up to answer your YouTube questions. If you have a question about what it is that you're doing on YouTube, there's a form down in the description right now where you can get your questions down there, and it is 100% free to get your questions answered. So if you can get them down there now, very likely that your question will get answered on the stream today. So go ahead and do that. Now, before we get into it, um, I do want to let you know that today's stream is brought to you by StreamYard. StreamYard is the live streaming tool that I use to stream this every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And the reason that I use StreamYard is because it's super easy. So for example, right here in this setup that we're doing, even though it looks complicated, we're actually pushing everything through StreamYard. That allows me to have the little StreamYard URL on the screen. It allows me to put graphics on the screen. It also allows it allows us to easily bring in guests and be able to run the, the, the thing here um, on both computers, which is also really cool. But you can try StreamYard out for yourself at StreamYard.com. If you want to easily bring guests onto your stream and things like that, play background music, all kinds of really cool stuff you can do with it, but make sure that you check that out when you get the chance, or I got links down in the description. So I'm today, running this entire show yeah. off the StreamYard mug. Yeah. Off the mug. Yeah. Yeah. That's how cool StreamYard is. <laughs> running the entire <laughs> All show. You just drink the coffee yeah. and, uh, and it pretty much runs itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fantastic. Everything. <laughs> so, uh, so um, what we're going to do today is, um, yeah, I guess we're just going to answer some questions, D. I guess that's what we're doing today. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do that. And I then, might ask a few. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Maybe we might get into some shenanigans. You know, we'll, we'll see how it all goes down. <laughs> but um, first, before we get into it, um, I do want to let everybody know, um, you know, because you're all content creators here. So I do want to let you know that we, um, uh, well, not we, but there is a new feature inside of YouTube. Now they've done some stuff with podcasts. You can check out the video on the um, Creator Insiders channel for that. But one thing that I haven't seen them mention yet is there's a new metric in your audience retention report to where they show you the details of when people left. So for example, it'll show you like, you know, several hundred people left during this part or 20 people left during this part. And it just shows you a graph and shows you specifically where people are leaving your video at that point in time. In order to find this, you just click into your actual YouTube analytics. From there, go into your content tab and then you go into the video that you want to look at and you want to see that this new report. And then you click into the uh, uh, analytics for that. Once you're in the analytics for it, then you just scroll down, you know, that main page and you're going to see your audience retention report at the very bottom of that page. So what you want to do there is you're going to see a little see more next to that graph. Once you hit that see more, then it's going to open up a new page for you. And that page, you're going to see a little thing that says audience retention. It's a drop down. When you click on that, um, it's going to show you two other options. It's going to show you compared to other videos, which is one of the options. This has been on there for a really long time, but they changed the language. It used to be relative audience retention, but now they change the language to compared to other videos, which makes sense. And they make it clear in there that it's compared to other videos of the same length on YouTube, not just channels in your niche. Okay. So you can just get an idea of how people are enjoying your videos compared to others. If you're somebody that's like, Hey, I'm publishing great videos. Why aren't people responding to them? In a lot of cases, you know, that graph can help you identify why. Um, but if you hit that same drop down, you go all the way to the bottom of it, then you're going to see those detailed um, uh, stats to where it's going to show you specifically where people are leaving your videos. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew about that because that's one more thing that we can utilize in order to make better videos. So you ready to answer some questions, D? Yeah, let's get into it and answer some questions. I'm I'm finagling some stuff. Okay. I'm, ooh, I'm, I'm finagling my here. brain, just getting used to, you know, getting my vibe down, getting kind of like in the groove here. So um, the very first question comes from George on the rocks. Hey, good morning, biz cuz, uh, B slash, and hope that you're doing fantastic. Welcome to the uh, stream today. Sally, AI storyteller, welcome to the stream today as well. Mr. Krause, hope that you are doing fantastic. Doug Hooson in the house. What is going on, my man? Hope that you're doing great. Chantel Hills, nice to see you in here. Doug? Old Trish, nice to see you 
new homekeeping channel. Hope that you are also doing great. What Doug, I say? Doug's hitting some milestones, I saw. Yeah, Doug hit 9,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. High five and fist bump to you, Doug, for crossing uh, 9,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. That's always a big, humongous win. Any, uh, you know, any, any milestones like that are definitely a plus. We got Tube Spanner in the house dropping a super hey, chat. Hey, hey. Thank you for that. Danielle says, since the Linus Tech Tips drama, oh, yeah. um, we updated our security. First, we changed our password to Brazil Nut. So it's hard to crack. That's good. That's good. Always coming in with the dad jokes. <laughs> oh, love it. Why Absolutely are, love why it. Why are Brazil nuts hard to crack? Yeah, well, it's just because it's a nut, I guess. I don't know. Why yeah, couldn't it be like a walnut? Know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, send her a message. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> uh, okay, so as we keep on uh, going, so um, uh, Renee Ritchie says, hey, uh, nice setup. Uh, D and hey, Nick. Uh, hey, Nimmons Renee. assembled. Absolutely. Hope you're doing great, Renee. You're watching The Mandalorian, Renee. Oh, I haven't caught up on it yet. Um, I have to, I'm, I'm going to binge watch it. But anyway, George on the Rocks, um, before we, we don't want to get derailed right out of the gate, I guess, right? <laughs> so uh, George on the Rocks, um, been on YouTube for six months. Uh, they do art tutorials, the goal of the channels to grow a community and to get monetized. And the question is, I survived a stroke last year and I restarted my YouTube channel as a form of art therapy. I do voiceovers, kind of. Um, I will start live streaming soon in about two months when my ability to speak improves. I'm going to buy a Logitech C922. Any suggestions? Yeah, a C922, Logitech C922 is a great place to get started. Very cheap, you know, webcam or low cost uh, webcam, but it's high quality in terms of the, you know, image that you can get out of it. What you wanna make sure that you're thinking about when it comes to getting the best possible quality out of any camera, it doesn't matter if it's your phone, doesn't matter if it's an expensive DSLR, it doesn't matter if it's a you know a webcam, um, is the lighting. So if you have you know uh, a, a really great camera but your lighting sucks, then in that case it's going to cause the image to not look as good as it should either. So because of that, you got to make sure that you are also thinking about the lighting. So get the webcam. And just a really low cost hack that you can do for your lighting is if you have lights around your house, um, you can um, like say you have like a halogen light or something like that. Technically, you can just kind of point that over towards the wall a little bit and kind of crank that up a little bit so that you just get all the ambient light bouncing off of everything. But if you do that, make sure you white balance your camera afterwards so that it's metering the color of that light and then it's balancing everything. So since you're getting a Logitech, Logitech actually has a, a, like software that comes with it and you'll be able to do any white balancing sharpening things like that um, with that camera as well and also consider your audio because the video is only half of the experience when it comes to live streaming so you want to make sure that you do have you know at least acceptable audio because you don't want people to come into your stream or your video content and get distracted by you know all the sound bouncing around the room or anything like that so you want to make sure that you are thinking about the audio so there are some really low cost solutions to that as well like a blue yeti microphone um, i believe is one to where it's, it's a usb mic and it'll plug directly into your computer and then by getting that that with your Logitech, it will ensure that your stream looks good and sounds good. And again, just remember the lighting side when it comes to, uh, you, you know, putting it all together. So I've hopefully that a, helped. I've got a light hack that beats that one. Let's hear it. Set up your desk facing the window. Oh, that's the, good. The end. What if you stream at night? Move your house to be next continued. to <laughs> move your house next to a street lamp. Okay, there we go. Move your house next to a street lamp. I'll yep. be here all night. So you've been hanging out with Danielle, I see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Danielle and I, we make plans together. <laughs> we get stuff done. Some of us talk about like lamps and all this stuff. Danielle and I move houses. Move houses, yeah. yeah. <laughs> make no mistake. Between us. Lamp guy, I move houses. <laughs> so the uh, next question here is uh let's see here. So uh her heel review says, Does anyone know if Nick has a tutorial on going live? Absolutely I do. Um, if you look for um, on my channel, I have a getting started with live streaming and that actually shows you like how to, you know, set up like StreamYard and things like that. Um, I also have, depending on the software that you're going to be using, I also have it on OBS as well, um, like a step-by-step -step tutorial on getting all that set up. Um, so I do have those things on my channel or if you just go to YouTube search and you put in my name and then put in live streaming, um, then either this show is going to come up a lot um, or some of those videos, you know, based solely on, um, you know, how to do different things with your live streams are going to pop up. So our next question is from Ryan Learn Bikes. Ryan Learn Bikes um, has been on YouTube for one year or more. They do instructional motorcycle maintenance content. That's very 
very specific. It is I very specific. It. Yeah. The goal of the channel is to help others learn about motorcycles or how or and how to repair them. And the question is, do you recommend deleting dramatically underperforming shorts to improve channel optics and the overall average view count? Thank you in advance for your advice. Um, so I personally don't recommend that um, in terms of like removing things for the sake of making the channel look pretty. Um, so when you put out content and it doesn't perform well, it doesn't mean that it's always not going to perform well. Like sometimes it won't, right? If people just don't respond to it, but other times you can publish a piece of content and it'll come to life later. So because of that, when you put something out, you want to make sure that you have, you know, a decent amount of information on that video before you, you know, change any, or not before you change it, but before you delete it. Because if you go and you look at that video, you might find that, you know, people just didn't respond to it. And if you, you know, had it on the, um, you know, channel right now, maybe you're not getting that response, but maybe if you drive traffic to it, you know, uh, you know, a few months from now, maybe people will respond to it better just based on, you know, whatever's going on, you know, at that point in time. So you can absolutely delete stuff though. So if you're like, Hey, you know what, this is bad. I know it's bad. I look at the audience retention. It's bad. Like everything about this is bad. Um, you can, can absolutely delete videos off of your channel at any time. Um, but keep in mind, if you do delete anything off of your YouTube channel in terms of, you know, content, um, you will lose the public watch time from it. So, you know, if you are trying to get into like the YouTube partner program or something like that, then in that particular case, really important to make sure that you are, uh, you know, leaving, you know, the videos on your channel so that it just makes it easier for you to, uh, to do that. I brought one of my shorts back to life by changing the title. Did you? Yeah. 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 So there's that um, as well. Just kind of messing with it a little bit, right? Tinker it, see if you can get a better response, you know, yeah. um, that way. I also had one pick up out of nowhere. It was like completely dead for a couple of weeks. And then out of nowhere, it became relevant. Yeah. Off it goes. Next up, we got K Skis. K Ski. Yep. K Skis. K Skis uploads when they have time. Been on YouTube for a year or more. Jerry Pop Andrew, what's going on, man? Viper, man about tech. What's going on? I don't have your sound bite here, but welcome to the stream, dude. Hope you're doing well, awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So the uh, the type of channel here is gaming. If you're a gamer, uh, let me know. Just say me um, here in the chat. Um, but the goal of the channel is to be more consistent and reach 100 subscribers. And the question is, morning, Nick. So currently, good morning. Um, good. Uh, I'm currently editing a video and I want to improve my editing skills to those of a friend that I have with over a thousand subscribers. I've seen your videos on editing, but I haven't really known how to apply things like L cuts or J cuts. So I'm wondering if, wondering if there's any more edits you know of, or if anyone else knows how to do it that are easy to do. Um, I'm using CapCut if you need to know. So what you want to think about when it comes to editing your videos is yes, you can do, you know, the, the, you know, things that are a little bit more advanced there with like L cuts, J cuts, things like that. But at the end of the day, you can do perfectly fine. Just cut the video right so like if you're in cap cut for example one thing that you can do in there is you can like cut the video and then you can like zoom in a little bit you know things like that in order to you know make it look a little bit different if you choose to but you know just think about what's appropriate for the content and then just run with that so like right now if you're just getting started and you're trying to level things up like while you're in that process what i would do is i would take the things that you you know have learned so far and i would apply those and see you know how good you are at those and just see if it's appropriate for what it is that you're doing so how people are responding to it and so on and then you know build on from there um but really with those cuts and, you know, like zoom cuts and those sorts of things, um, that'll be, you know, most of what you need in order to be able to, you know, get the job done when it comes to YouTube, but don't be afraid of just, you know, straight, you know, just straight cuts either in terms of just cutting from one thing to the next without having to do anything special to it. Um, it's just those additional special things just kind of make everything a little bit more smooth and all of that. And it's things that you'll notice, but the viewer won't even really, you know, they, they won't even really notice that you're doing those types of things. Do you see Renee's comment? Unless they're a filmmaker. What do you say? Uh, Renee says, um, Jabril's got almost no views on his Escher staircase video for two years. Then one day, millions of views in a week. Now oh, six nice. plus, yeah, now six plus million in his most popular video. Nice. Right. It goes back to sometimes those yeah, old goes. videos, those old shorts, just, they come back to life, man. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Really good. Um, let's see here. So, oop, just went, uh, that just went away. I went to pin a super chat there and it went away. Give me one second. Let me go into here and find it. So the gaming shelf, thank you for the super chat, by the way, says, um, why do YouTubers love the legend of Zelda? There's always a link in the description. Sorry, not sorry, man. What is it with this? Like dad joke day. And like, yes, yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's good. Gaming shelf. Love know. it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, you and not, Danielle should be hanging out too. <laughs> I hope it's not trying to tell me something. <laughs> dad <laughs> jokes and go home and find out I'm a dad. <laughs> Get home and she's like, uh, hey, I, I need you to sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. And you're like, oh. Oh, you got COVID. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll put my mask on. <laughs> You, you need me to go to the doctor or yeah. you need me to go yeah. need yeah. some medicine? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, <laughs> so good. Okay, so next up, uh, we've got, uh, we're on number four here already. It's great. It says, um, Dead Skull is the name of the uh, YouTube channel. They do biweekly content. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. They do health bar videos. Um, let's see here. The goal of their channel says, I would like to grow on YouTube and do what I like doing. The question is, I'm nearly at 1,000 subscribers. Congratulations. And when I started, I was successful. One video has nearly 50,000 views, but it's not like that now. Do you know or have any idea what I'm doing wrong and improve on it? So here's the thing. In order to know what you're doing wrong, I would need to look at your channel. I would need to look at your videos. I would need to look at your analytics, you know, that sort of thing. Since, you know, I obviously can't do that here while I'm streaming. Um, what you need to do is you need to go in and look at that video that got 50,000 views. And that's going to have clues all over it on what it is that you did right in that video in terms of how people responded to it compared to what it is that you're currently doing. Now, one thing that's super important to keep in mind when you are comparing it, and just to keep in mind, YouTube has in um, advanced analytics, they have a compare feature. So you can select that video with 50,000 uh, views on it, and you can compare that to, by clicking the compare button um, to a, another video that doesn't, you know, that doesn't compare. And by doing that, you're going to see, you know, all the stats in terms of how people responded in all these different ways between the two. So what you want to make sure that you're thinking about when you're doing that is you do want to consider the impressions because it's normal on YouTube when you get a lot of impressions. And for those of you that are new, what an impression is, is it's when YouTube shows your content to somebody on the platform for more than a second. Okay. So when you get an impression on your video, if you have a small amount of impressions, typically based on how the system works in terms of when you first publish them showing it to the people that are the you know best candidates for your content, typically the numbers are higher there Breathe. in terms of how people respond. Breathe. And then from there... <laughs> In the nostrils. <laughs> and then from there, um, um, yeah, just lost my train of thought. Love it. Woo. Derailed. Yep. Nice work. <laughs> Derailed. Okay. So, um, um, so yeah, so when you're doing that comparison, you need to make sure that you are looking at the impressions because when you have the, <laughs> when you have a lower amount of impressions or a lower amount of people interacting with the content, it's a lot easier to keep the numbers high because those people are, are a better candidate for your content in terms of they're a better fit for your content. And then when you start getting lots of impressions on a video, then it's going into more general audiences or more people that aren't that ideal fit, but they're likely to enjoy it. And as that, you know, as that gets bigger and bigger and shown to more and more people, it can push the numbers down because obviously as it goes out to more people, then you, uh, because everybody, you know, enjoys different things and all that, then you're going to have, you know, less and less people that are going to respond at that positive level. So because of that, it kind of pushes all the numbers down. So you have to make sure that you're keeping the impressions in mind when you are um, looking at your analytics, especially when you're doing comparisons like that. Next question. Um, let's see here. So next up we've got... Number five here, we've got no people, no problems. That's true. That's ab that's true. You We're know, like, lying, yeah, man. yeah, I mean, that's definitely, yeah. I mean, no, it's an off grid living channel. Yep. Could have seen that one coming. The yep. goal of the channel says to monetize and teach others how to develop off grid life. Super cool. Love what you're doing. The uh, question is going to be like instructions on how to get rid of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe you should yeah, be on Rumble. That's a different channel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's my Rumble channel. <laughs> The uh, question says, I'm not sure. Um, am I growing at the speed I'm supposed to with subs and watch hours? I do daily shorts and weekly long videos. I need an outside perspective from a professional to destroy or make me better. Thank you for your time and, um, and the help that you give us. So when it comes to um, how your channel should be performing, there isn't like a, there isn't a standard, so to speak, in terms of like, okay, if somebody starts a YouTube channel, then by this time, their videos should be getting this if they're publishing this many videos or if they publish this many videos. That doesn't exist. And the reason that doesn't exist is because everybody comes onto the platform with different understandings, with different skill sets, with different things that they bring from their past life, different person in terms of skills and stuff, um, um, different personalities, um, different concepts content types, different ways that they put videos together, things like that. So because of that, there isn't a standard in terms of by this time you should have, you know, X, Y, or Z. So because of that, it's really important to make sure that you are keeping that in mind and that you're just thinking, okay, this is how people responded to my last video. 
how can I try to make this one better based off of how I see that people responded to this last video? And essentially you just rinse and repeat that process. And by rinsing and repeating that process, then that's how you get better because you start learning like, okay, when I do these things, people respond better. When I do these things, they don't respond as well. Okay. So when you are, you know, trying to, you know, self analyze, instead of comparing yourself against all of the other, you know, creators on YouTube, just look at your own personal stats and on your own videos that you're publishing and say, okay, this is, this is how, you know, people are receiving this. Can I do better with this next one that I'm putting together? Right. And then by doing that, you're staying in your own lane and you're competing with yourself because in reality, the way, just the nature of YouTube in terms of how it works, like, you have to look at it that way or you'll go crazy because there's always channels that are coming on that will end up, you know, either, you know, growing quicker than you think that they should, or they'll have content that people are responding to. And you're like, wait a minute, the videos I'm putting out are way better or they're way helpful or way more informative, or I'm, you know, at they're way more cinematic or whatever, you know, our own biases are when I it comes to that. I spend more time making these videos than they do. Right. Therefore right. I should get more views. Right. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. They just might have better thumbnails. Right. They might have better titles. Right. Yeah. And with that also, like, you know, when it comes to comparisons, um, and I'm not saying that you're necessarily, you know, like freaking out, you know, that somebody, you know, is getting a different result because you're just trying to figure out where you're at. Um, but, you know, just for everybody else, when it comes to the comparison side of things, you also don't know where people get their traffic. Right. So like, you know, some people advertise, you know, and some people have other things that they do that they advertise for, but then they link their YouTube channel. And because of that, a lot of people will come in that way and, 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 you know, start, you know, engaging in their YouTube channel from there. So because because of that, it's just really important to make sure that you're looking at what's happening on your last video and then changing it or not changing, but then using that information to make your next videos better. Super chat. Um, let's see here. So next up on the list. You got a super chat up there. All right. Dark um, bites. Hey, what's going on, Shark Scrapper? Um, yeah, I don't see it on my end, so I'm going in here right now. Okay, Dark Bite says, is it a good idea um, if I can't post a new video to update title and thumbnail, maybe some editing and upload it while pr uh, privating the older one? Um, so you're saying if you can't post a new video, update the old video with a new thumbnail and title? Or you're saying upload the same video, private the other one, but have a different title and thumbnail on the new version that you uploaded. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to upload the same content to YouTube. Um, so if you have a video up on YouTube, you want to work with that video and change the title and thumbnail on that video, because every time you up, like if, if you upload first off, in some cases, they won't even let you like, as you're uploading a video, it'll say that this video, you know, is already, you know, like on your channel or whatever. But if you do happen to get it through, um, then you can run into other problems when it comes to YouTube of just uploading duplicate content and stuff like that. Um, so because of that, what I recommend that you do is try working on the thumbnail and title of the video that you have. Um, if it's the same exact video, instead of, you know, trying to essentially private the one and then trying to give it a fresh start, which is kind of, you know, my interpretation of what you're trying to do, um, of giving it a fresh start through a new upload so that it has the new tag on it and then a new title and thumbnail, right? You know what you, know what you could do? Like if you can't make new videos, and I think that's what you were talking about, you could clip parts of your other videos and just turn them into shorts. Yeah. So you are getting some uploads uploads to your channel, but you're doing it through YouTube shorts. Yeah. And if you're also trying to just, you know, make sure that you're keeping up like channel activity, because for whatever reason you can't upload that week or whatever, then that's a great place to where you can use like stories. If you're qualified for that, um, you can use your community posts, which we all have, um, you know, those types of things like D was talking about, you know, you can remix some of your own, you know, content to create shorts out of it, those types of things just to, you know, be able to, you know, kind of keep the activity going, just kind of keep you involved and engaged with what's happening on your channel as well. Super track. Travel with, uh, Caribbean says, thank you so much for what you do um, and how you do it. I've submitted my question. Thanks again. My pleasure. Um, um, and I will um, hopefully we'll get to your question. We've got a decent amount of them in here. Um, so just as a heads up for super chats, anybody that does um, super chat that gets you like past the form. So that prioritizes your question just, you know, so you know. So in your case, um, travel with uh, Caribbean. If you just drop your question into the chat, then I'll just go ahead. I'll just go ahead and answer it um, as soon as I see it. So um, next up here, we've got uh, Synergy the Gamer. 
Synergy the Gamer has been on YouTube for less than six months. Um, they have a gaming channel. The current goal of the channel says, I currently don't know where I'd like to take my YouTube career at this point. Um, the question is, I'm just wondering, how do I regain the motivation to make videos again? I took a week off since me obsessing over analytics low key was damaging my mental health and causing anxiety over videos not performing well. Some of my main subscribers have been commenting on my unlisted videos, asking where I'm at. Um, I don't want to just leave them in the dust at the same time. I don't know what I should do with my YouTube channel at the moment since I'm not creating content. Okay. So when it comes to being motivated to create content, like what you're dealing with right now is um, like, it's a, it's a serious thing. Tons of content creators deal with it. Sometimes it can be like creative block in terms of like, I just can't come up with the ideas right now. Sometimes it can be motivation to where you're just spending your energy somewhere else. And by the time it comes time to make videos, you're just like, you just don't have it. Um, and you know, other times you're just not as interested in that moment as you thought you were you know, when you, you know, started or, you know, whatever. So, you know, it, there are a bunch of different reasons, you know, everybody has different reasons, but like when it comes to, you know, trying to get the motivation again, the best thing you can do in my opinion, and yeah, you know, I'd love to hear Dee's input on this as well, but the best thing you can do is reevaluate like why you're doing what it is that you're doing and start setting goals. And by doing those two things, then you get a little bit more clear yourself and you also, by setting a goal, it gives you a target and something to work for. Because, you know, in your particular case, you're like, I don't know what I wanna do with my YouTube channel. And that by itself could be why you're having trouble, you know, being motivated to make videos. So what you wanna think about is like, okay, if I'm having trouble um, figuring out what it is that I wanna do with my YouTube channel, let me just set a loose goal. Let me, let, me, let me set a goal that isn't necessarily based on how many subscribers I'm gonna get or how many, vid or how many uh, you know, uh, uh, video views I'm gonna get or how many likes I'm gonna to get or anything like that but instead have your goal to where it's like okay over the next 30 days um, my goal for this month is i'm going to upload you know one video per week um, every friday no matter what happens that's my goal for this month and by doing that it's going to as long as you hold yourself accountable it's going to um, get you in motion of you know making the content and doing what it is that you need to do to hit those goals and just as a heads up you know because you're just getting into this um like when you start a YouTube channel and even, you know, like as you're, you know, going through the journey, like you don't have to know like, okay, this is exactly what I'm doing. This is exactly who I'm trying to reach. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. Like have fun, right? Like you don't have to like, Having goals and stuff is great for keeping you going and, you know, giving you the reason to do it. But at the end of the day, like, you know, if you're just getting started and you're trying to learn how to do all this, just try like having a good time, try, you know, just being creative with the videos that you're putting out and just trying to think like, how can I just, you know, do something, you know, fun, or maybe I'll spend a little bit more time editing this particular one and try to do some fun stuff in there that I don't, you know, do normally, you know, anything with you that would get you, you know, a little bit more inspired to do the thing. But I think that, you know, just kind of tying it down to, I'm going to at least make a video uh you know per week for the next 30 days so that i can just practice building up my skills even though i'm i don't have any goals for what i want to accomplish with the channel long term d thoughts yeah i mean i don't know where they're at on their journey i don't know where their channel is at or what kind of success they've had so far but i'm one of those people who currently does not know what they want to do with their channel i've been in this spot for a long time it's kind of like uh it's like no man's land like, and like limbo yeah limbo yeah. like yeah. I, i've literally been in limbo and being in that limbo can cause you like you know just a paralysis where you can't make movements because you don't feel inspired to make the things right like i um, I, I've made some shorts and I've done a couple of streams, you know, just trying to kind of keep things moving, but it's really tough because you're unmotivated to do it. Again, I don't know where you're at, but if you're just getting started and you're like, I don't know what's going on. I think one thing that all of us are kind of guilty of, I mean, but there's truth to it. We always talk about find your niche, find your niche, find your niche. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on new people. Like I have to find my niche or I'm going to be or lost. It's never gonna to, work. Or it's never going to happen. Yeah. Right. And yes, you should find a niche. That's very important if you want to grow your channel. But something also has to be said in terms of not putting the cart before the horse. Like you said, Nick, you have to learn the skills. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to edit. You have to learn how to present. You have to learn to make your audio sound good. You have to learn how to choose the right. There's so many things you have to learn skill-wise that just just make the videos. Just, just say, hey, you know what? I, I'm going to make videos about whatever I want to make videos about. As long as your channel's new, like if you're, if you're knee deep in a niche and you have some success, I don't recommend doing this. But if you're, if you're just getting going and you're kind of lost, just make videos. Don't worry about anything else. Just make videos and get good at making videos, whatever they are, whatever they are, you'll find your niche along the way. But if you have a channel that's had success, uh, yeah, maybe not, 
maybe not do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but if you're just getting started, man, just make videos. Learn the skills yeah. first. After you learn the skills, it won't matter as much what you're going to make because you'll be good at it. Yeah. And it's easy to get caught up too. Like yeah. you'll hear people like me, other YouTube channels that yeah. you're watching, stuff like that, being like, "If you want to grow your channel, do this, yeah. right?" Yeah. And and that's if you want to accelerate things, and if you are like trying to be like a full time creator, things like that. But if you're like just getting started, just it's okay. Like you know, like relax about that kind of stuff, and just be like, "Hey, right now, I'm just gotta you know work on my skill sets." Like Dee's talking about about making videos and just learning how to do all this stuff. And right now, I'm just gonna focus on making a bunch of videos. Yeah. And then as I'm going through that process, I'm gonna start to you know under understand, you know, hey, I enjoy doing these types of videos. I don't enjoy doing these types of videos. When I publish videos like this on my channel, they typically do better than when I publish these types of videos on my channel. And then, you know, your audience that you're in front of can start to lead you in the right direction. That's what happened with me. Like I'm sitting here right now in front of you guys because, um, you know, like I made a video about search engine optimization. And then I started having people in the comment section of that asking me to make more videos like that. And the next thing you know, you know, like everything's going awesome on my channel and I'm like, a, a, you know, a YouTube help person. <laughs> yeah, you know, another thing that's weird about that, though, like at the same time is like you want to choose a niche, right? You want to choose a niche. You want to kind of own your space and, and hopefully become an expert yeah. in, in whatever it is that you're talking about. But at the same time, it's really easy to paint yourself in the corner and kind of get stuck there. And all of a sudden, that's all you can talk about. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful of that, too. I mean, it's I, I think having longevity on, on a platform like YouTube, it, it's a balancing act. Mm. It's truly a balancing act. Hey, really quick, um, I just want to give a shout out and say uh, congratulations to uh, Seriester's channel. They say, since 2019, I followed this channel um, and I have 800,000 subscribers. Congratulations to you. High five and fist bump uh, for you know your success there. Nice work. Super Travis, tracks. MVP in the house. What's going on, my man? Hope that you are doing fantastic. Travis, my man. Hope my you're doing great, man. Heart goes out to you, yeah, for the uh, you know for yeah. your for your dog. That one hits heavy because I have a little chihuahua myself. Uh, definitely hits uh, heavy. Went down, gave it some extra love, actually, actually after, uh, after seeing your post man i'm uh yeah sorry to hear about that yeah. um so next up on our okay, we got some super uh, super chats okay go on uh eric waits eric wait whiskey studies so first um i've got some other ones starting here um first so oh. i'm just going to go through these All in right. the order that i that i see okay. them real quick i'll take them off then. so really quick um uh martin from calming anxiety says member for 22 months um hey nick uh thanks for all of your help my brand uh with my brand so much look forward uh so much to look forward to after YouTube brought in podcast. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you're finding value in the content, man. Uh, super awesome to, to, to just see the success that you're having because you're like blowing up. <laughs> uh, uh, the Travel with Caribbean channel says my channel, um, this was the super chat that came in. Um, they say that my channel is about travel and adventure and I like to and I like using Epidemic Sound, which I subscribe to, but I keep getting copyright claims on my videos. Is this negatively impacting my channel? No, but it can impact your revenue. So if you are, just as a heads up, if you are an Epidemic Sound, you, first, you should just be using creator mix that's our uh that's our music <laughs> service so i'm gonna go ahead and just put this on the screen just so everybody knows okay. um Ooh, oh you I, got it already oh, yeah, yeah just so everybody knows about this so we have a free music service that we created we don't have the library yet that epidemic sound has we don't have sound effects yet so if you need sound effects then of course you got to find a place for those but if you're looking for music that is free where you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff make sure you check us out at creatormix.com but anyway the uh with epidemic sound they have a whitelisting option. So make sure that you go into your settings there um, on Epidemic Sound and that you actually put the link to your YouTube channel, your TikTok account, your Instagram account, or anywhere where you're gonna be publishing your videos. And by doing that, it basically tells their system that you are a paying subscriber. And as long as you're a paying subscriber at the time of publish, then you shouldn't be getting those. Um, and the fact well, that you're having to go through and dispute those is kind of, you know, kind of messing up your workflow a little bit. So I would definitely also send them a message and be like, hey, what's going on i keep getting these you know issues from your music and i'm paying for this so this shouldn't be happening <laughs> so i would definitely do that as well what were you gonna say Dean? yeah i was just gonna say there's things with like the content id system in general where it sometimes makes mistakes yeah. like like you're paying for epidemic sound you're incorrectly getting copyright claims so definitely reach out to them let them know that it's happening make sure your your channels are whitelisted like you said but at the same time when you do get those claims uh, claims it, it also make sure that you're still a member yeah. Make, make sure yeah. that you're still a member uh, because you can't, okay, if you cancel your membership with Epidemic Sound, anything that you've used up to that point is still covered. Yeah. But if you downloaded tracks and came back and re-uploaded them while you're not a member, you technically could get a claim for that. Mm. 
but the content ID system in general does make mistakes, and it could just be an honest mistake. So reach out to them and let them know what's going on. Neil, Urban Van Life, what's up, dude? Hope you're doing awesome. Um, so the next one here is from Eric Waite Whiskey Study. Says, who is cuter, Grogu or Daniel Batal? Grogu. Grogu, yeah, Grogu. all day, all day. I just, oh, my God. Yeah, all I, day. yeah we watched The Mandalorian again last night. Just my heart. <laughs> oh, I love Grogu. Solly, AI Storyteller. Thank you for the super chat. Super, super, uh, super appreciated. Um, David Matney says, uh, good morning. What is the best app for editing shorts on my phone? I have an Android. Thanks. So, um, uh, see, I don't think spark camera. So CapCut is the answer, um, to, to your question. So either a cap cut or video leap, both of those are great. Um, um, when it comes to the end, the end, yeah, the end, but there is one app for those of you that are iPhone users. Um, that's great if you're putting together like quick and dirty stuff. So, um, oh, if like, let's say for example, stuff. if I was going to do a short with D real quick and I was like, okay, so I'm here with my brother and then I jump over to him and I'm like, his name is D and we're getting ready to go live. And then I hop back over here and I say something, um, basically how it works is you just hold down the button while you're recording and then you let off your, your thumb when you're done and then it's finished. So you can do a bunch of little short clips like that. And it's pretty much like well, auto edit it's as you're going through it so you don't have to even edit anything so you just you know record those little bits and then you can you know render it out you're good to go but if you need to fine tune the clips you can do that as well but you that's only that. available on iphone but it's called um a uh, spark camera it's called youtube shorts you can do that from inside the shorts app too oh you mean on just, the, if uh, you're just recording the clips oh yeah. okay okay yeah, all yeah, the, I, all, I never use the native shorts app either. for anything I, but you can yeah. do it that way so yeah. take all the streaming platforms i'll end up like jason streaming. Hell, hell, is right. this on all is this the recording short all yeah. of the short form. <laughs> we, got, we got to tell that story. Yeah. Okay. All okay. of the short form platforms you can record natively in there. The problem yeah. with that is like if like when you do that, it's going up there, so right. you have to download it from there. Yeah. And then if you want to add like color correct or anything right. like that, yeah. Like like yeah. Right. I, I never. Yeah. That's not even in my in my brain. Tell them tell them the story about our friend. Okay. So we have a friend of ours. And, and by the um, way, if you're watching, dude, we're not making fun of yeah, you. Yeah. Not making fun of you. Yeah. yeah we think I it's love great. you, dude. Yeah. yeah. So so like. Uh, uh, so our friend, um, he's been wanting to make content for a really long time. And, um, you know, one of the things that we continually try to do is, you know, try to encourage him to make videos. So we were in a conversation. I'm like, Hey dude, you know, just do it right now. Like, like while we're having this conversation, just, you know, open up one of these apps. I told him to go to clapper and open that one up. So just go there, create an account and just make something. I was like, just look at it and talk to it. And, um, and he did, and he's like, you know, okay, I got one up. And I went and I looked at his at the account and, and and it's him like sitting in his bed and like the lights all like crazy or whatever. And he's like, the whole thing is like three seconds. And it's like, oh, I think it's recording. And, and then like it was over. Yeah, it was great. And yeah. he was getting views yeah. on it. Yeah, and he was getting views on it. Yeah. So that particular app, you can get views really fast on it because it's not like saturated like, you know, TikTok or uh, you know, YouTube in that regard. So like in some some cases, like you'll publish a video there and it'll have a thousand views within like, you know, minutes. So like that particular video, it was just like every time I refreshed, it was like, whoa, he's got like, you know, a hundred more views, hundred more views. And uh it was approaching, I think it actually crossed a thousand views, that yeah. particular one. Just blows this on. And then he ended up this... deleting it and then uploading uh another one. But yeah. in my opinion, that was like, you know, he that was the winner. That was yeah, the winner. Should have kept that one. Yeah, like people, that was the winner. People always say, "How do I make a viral video?" Yeah, that's it. And for most people, like you, I mean, some people know they can engineer those things, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah, sure. for the rest of us in the trenches, they just happen. Yeah. And that's one of those things. Like if it got like a thousand views, like in a very short period of time. There's a good chance that was going to be a viral video. Yeah. Just some dude in his 50s going like, is this on? Is this on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or is, it's recording. Right? Yeah. Is this yeah. recording? Yeah, I think right. it's recording. Yeah. Is this rec that could have <laughs> ended up like a, like, like a meme, a famous meme. Right. <laughs> oh, you're that guy. <laughs> meme to death on the internet. Right. Yeah. He becomes known as like that. It, oh, hey, it's the is this recording guy? Right. Yeah. Hey, is that recording? He could have merch, just like right. a big recording. You yeah, know, like a big red circle on his shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's great. We love you, man. So, um, eighty six <laughs> says, um, when you start a channel, um, do it yourself. Uh, do it for yourself, basically. Um, I'm interpreting that is just a message to everybody here in the chat um, as saying that like if you're starting a channel like do it for you know yourself for the reasons that you want to do it for you know all of that stuff um, which is you know fantastic you know understanding why you are doing your YouTube channel will help you make a ton of very difficult decisions down the road so you know like when you don't know why it is that you're doing your youtube channel and you're just kind of hoping things work out and publishing videos um it can make you know certain decisions challenging in terms of like hey should i make this video or this video um should i work with this company or should i you know not work with this company should i collaborate with this person yes or no like all of these things it just makes it really um really easy so um the next one that we have here on the list we're gonna say d you were leaning in i was gonna say you've got a handful of super chats to go okay yeah right. going through them going through them uh, right now so um, let's see here. So next up, 
says, um, spin on question. Who's cuter? We got that one. We Crooked. got, sorry, uh, Daniel. sorry, Daniel. That okay. So, Melinda Elliott, thank you for the super chat. Says, I see um, several creators posting videos under a minute in horizontal. I'm assuming that is so much watch time. Um, I'm assuming so that the watch time counts for monetization. Is that a good idea? Um, so technically, unless the rules have changed in the past like six months or so, um, you have to, even a horizontal video has to be longer than a minute before it qualifies for monetization. Um, I'm not sure if Renee's still in here or not, but he might be able to, to co-sign that one. But when it comes to uh, monetization, you know, for a piece of video content, there are requirements for that as well. Um, even if it's a 16 by nine ratio, or we'll just call it a regular, you know, format, uh, video, which I guess we're gonna have to start calling vertical content regular soon. Cause it's like, I mean, it's going that, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's going that way. It's there. Yeah. So like, I don't know what to call regular and it, 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 it's tough because you're like, if these are, if these are shorts, but then we have verticals that are long, like, what do we call all that stuff? Right? Well, we didn't call it shorts until YouTube named them shorts. Right, right. We, because when TikTok ran with it. It was just vertical. It was just vertical, vertical video, video. Right. Right. Nobody said, oh, now it's... we have vertical shorts and then vertical longs. And then we have horizontal short content right. and then horizontal longs then horizontal like super longs right <laughs> like i don't even know what to like how do you keep how do you keep up with you know the, the I, names of all this stuff? i, I, I don't know start We're playing around a notepad maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. notepad um so uh, <laughs> low effort videos yeah yeah low yeah, e call it that <laughs> low effort videos. i don't know lonnie renee's vlog um thank you for the super sticker um super appreciate that and um soft spot for art says a few weeks ago you gave advice for um animation channels to make relatable story content how does someone find initial traction to become the next um, Jaden animations or odd ones out. Um, so through growing a YouTube channel of any kind, the best way that you can get the inspiration is just thinking of, you know, what can I add to this space? How can I connect with the people that I'm trying to, you know, connect with through this content? What can I make these animations about that the people that I think that I'm targeting with this content would enjoy the most? And, and by targeting, what I mean is, there's certain demographics of people that enjoy Star Wars. There's certain demographics of people that don't. Um, there's certain demographics of people that watch uh, Sex in the City. There's certain demographics of people that you know would throw a TV across the room if that was on. You know when they were in their place. Sex in um, the City is actually pretty it good. Is good. Yeah, it, it is, is good. good. It is good. Yeah. So we're demographics, and those first two were positive demographics there on Star Wars and Sex in the City, apparently. Um, but you know, like you know, there's different groups of people that are into different you know types of things. So for example, if you're doing animations and you're doing animations on one thing that would resonate um, with you know people that are into like let's say Star Wars just as an example um, then in that particular case you would need to think oh you don't would need to but it would be helpful to think about okay if I'm trying to reach people that are interested in like these things then you know what types of animations could I make that they would be likely to you know be into but like the you know comment said before from 86 you know also think if you're doing animation content you're creative and since you're a creative like you know make stuff that you think is awesome and you know figure out you know how do I make a really compelling title for this or a really compelling thing thumbnail and as you're you know thinking of that one thing that you can think about because it's always helpful to like leverage like pop culture at least things that there's a lot of people that are into so one thing that you can always leverage at any time is emotion. So if you're doing animated content, thinking of, you know, emotions or just themes that people deal with on a regular basis. So as an example, you know, when people like, I'm not sure what your age is, but like, let's say you're a younger person and you're in school, then in that particular case, making animations about somebody going to school and the things that somebody deals with in school, then you would be able to reach people that are at that school age and the animations that you're making would be relatable to those people based on what it is that they're going through in their lives. If you're at you know reaching somebody that is just entering the job market and uh let's say they just got get out of like university or they get out of high school and start working whatever then this is another one demographically that you would need to figure out but basically when you are making animations for that person then you know maybe you know you include some things about the office life or you know things like that that would resonate with them or if you're targeting entrepreneurs then you would make con you know animations that would apply to them in fact um there's a TikTok channel and i can't remember it off the top of my head because i can never remember TikTok channels but um, um there's one Isn't right now weird? it is there's one right now that um that is making these super minimal animations for people that are uh like learning how to produce music and all of these animations it's like a black screen and then they just have these like line arts that they do and they're just they're just really compelling and the voice is soothing and all that stuff so you'll sit there and watch them but every single one is targeted towards people that are interested in music production so when it comes to your animations just thinking like okay how can i 
you know, one, make it in a way that it's, you know, for a certain group of people, but two, how can I consistently make animations for a certain group of people? And when you understand that and you can, you know, tap into that and you, and you know where it is that you're essentially pointing your content, then in that particular case, it'll help you more effectively reach the people that you're trying to connect with. So hopefully that helps. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list here, um, I think there was one more that came in. And then we're going to jump back into the form here in just a second. I think you have a couple more super chats. I think okay. you're behind. I just refreshed the page, so I'm okay. uh, pulling these up now. And hey, really quick, uh, one thing that I just wanted to mention as well, because I forgot to do this when we first started. Um, if you are a tube spanner user, um, just as a heads up, make sure you get your notepads Put out. Put that back on. Put that back there on. we go. Make hey. sure. Oh, my arms coming <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah. The dancing uh, tube spanner that? notepad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, help me over here. Hey, yeah. hey. Up, hey it's the tube spanner. It's the tube spanner notepad. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> make sure you get your notepad out. If you're not familiar with tube spanner, um, it's a um, browser extension and it's a website um, with all kinds of helpful tools for you as a content creator. But one of the things they have is a notepad. So you can take notes on videos. You can use it to study competitors. You know, when you're watching their videos, you can use it to make chapters on your own. But um, a really cool thing is like as you're putting in your notes, um, it locks in the timestamp. So you can come back to that video and, and, and kind of revisit that moment in the video when you're just scanning through your notes, or you can download them and you'll have the timestamps with them as well. Um, so you can try that out. If you're not a user, um, you can check that out at tubespanner.com. I'm going to link down in the description. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard giving notepads arms. Man, yeah. Smothering yeah. under there. Out these notepad yeah. streets. Ooh. Yeah. He got crushed by a notepad. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> yeah. I walk in here at least once a week. He's laying on the floor <laughs> in a pile of notepads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. Okay, so uh, uh, Solly, uh, AI story Storyteller, thanks for the Super Chat, says, I have 162 subscribers and 160 videos, um, so etching is not working. Um, what to do? I'm doing so much effort. So when it comes to the effort that we're putting out there, there's some things that, that you have to combine with that. One, you do have a lot of videos. So like you're, you know, like you're doing the thing, but what, like, as you're publishing content, it's important to make sure that you're analyzing that content as well. Because as you're publishing that content, people are responding to it on YouTube. And the whole goal with all this stuff is making content that adds value in some way and or just creates a satisfactory experience for the people that are interacting with your content at a competitive level. If you can get your content to that spot, then you know, you'll do okay. So, and then of course you can keep getting better from there, but you have 160 videos on your channel. Every single one of those videos tells a story about how people respond to your content. So you need to look into the analytics of those videos. You need to start figuring out like, okay, what is it that people are enjoying about what I'm doing? What is it that people are not enjoying about what it is that I'm doing topically? If I look at all of my content, what do people, you know, have, is there any patterns that I see of content that people have typically responded to better over time compared to other content on the channel? Channel. Um, and you want to just start looking at all this and start looking at how people are clicking on your thumbnails um, and titles. Um, and instead of looking at the average out view, make sure you're looking in your traffic sources for this, um, which is in your advanced analytics, by the way. Um, but you need to make sure that you're, you know, doing the analysis side because as a content creator, super fun, you know, to actually make videos and do that part of things. But you have to analyze the content. I mean, it's, it's you don't have to, but it's a good practice to analyze the content so you can look for problem areas and you can say, okay, people aren't responding to this when I do it, therefore let me remove it and then, you know, either replace it with something else or just, you know, structure the video a little bit differently to get me through, you know, that particular part and see if that causes people to respond better, right? So, um, so when you are just grinding it out, you're putting in all of that effort, you know, the best way to get the best, the best returns out of that effort is to jump into the analysis side of things and say, I'm, I'm creating. Now I need to start analyzing as well and start interpreting how people are responding to what it is that I'm doing so I can fine tune things to create a better experience for them. Another super chat. Super um, Brandon chat. McBunny, thank you for the um, super chat um, as well, or the super sticker. Um, Science Based Fitness says, love the setup. After becoming monetized, do all of your channels become monetized, or does each individual one have to hit the threshold? Each individual oh. channel has to hit the threshold. That's a great question. Yeah, each individual channel needs to hit that threshold um, for monetization. 
And um, Soft Spot for Art says, for those two examples, they did start off with topics like bad advertisers and workplaces, um, but they were heavily personal. How is that a niche? Well, if it's if it's personal to you, other people have similar things, right? So it's like when it comes to niching down, it's important to think about the people that you're reaching with the content, not necessarily like the content. I mean, yes, the content, but it's more about the people that you're reaching with it. So like the niche is more these are the people that I'm trying to reach with my content, right? So even Target if it's your audience. personal story, it's still going to resonate with a certain group of people that are probably like you. So because of that, when you are, you know, putting all of this together with your animations, even if they're your personal stories, consistently doing them, you know, like, hey, this is stuff that I'm dealing with in my life right now, so I'm gonna make animations about this, then you're by default going to naturally resonate with other people that are also dealing with similar things that you are, that see the world in the way that you do and things like that through all the different things that you express through the animations that you're putting out. Hey, Colin, what's going up, man? What's going up? What's going on? Yeah, what's going up, too? I what's mean, going hey, up? Yeah. What's going hey, up? what's going up, y'all? You know what? Move it from this day forward. Yeah, what's going up? What's going up? <laughs> what's going up, y'all? <laughs> so uh, next question we have, and I'm going to jump into the um, form for this one here. Um, so we've got uh, somewhere in the DNA is the uh, next question here. They upload when they have time. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. Um, the type of channel says I'm a forensic genetic genealogist and i do stories on the cases that have been solved by it not my cases but cases from around the usa that's I pretty cool they were gonna, i thought he was gonna say and d's a dad <laughs> <laughs> See, and we found all of these children and, and we found them all yeah everyone yeah so check your email yeah there's gonna be somebody knocking on the door here in a second handing your papers right the um, goal of the channel is to spread the word of investigative tool of forensic uh, genetic genealogy. And the question is, I'm looking to figure out a voiceover. Um, I've been told by a few people that the program I'm using sounds to uh, sounds to AI, and I'm looking for something that I can use to help with that or a program idea that I can use to help disguise my voice or change my voice so that it isn't recognizable. I would do it myself, but I feel that my reading pace and speed when I'm doing bullet points makes me sound robotic. Any ideas? So this is a good question. Yeah. And, and what you're what you're struggling with applies to making video content, just regular video content and voiceovers too. So when you are, when you are thinking of it from the perspective of like, hey, I'm trying to, you know, communicate in a way that's not robotic. One, the best thing you can do is practice. Um, two, is it can also be helpful to work off of bullet points instead of scripts. So if you're talking about very technical things and you need, because maybe you don't have, you know, the information in your brain and you need to have some type of notes attached to it or something like that so that you can just remember those technical points, then communicating in your natural way through the bullet points can kind of get you past that robotic nature because if you're just reading a script one thing that can happen is that you are um, reading that script and instead of communicating like you would normally communicate you're thinking to yourself okay my script said this and now I'm repeating that and, and I'm saying it word for word so this word comes after this word and this word comes after this word and that can make you feel like stiff and robotic but if you are communicating in your natural way through bullet points then that can be you know a way to kind of get past that and just communicate more naturally um, in addition to that remember that editing can be your friend so you know a lot of times if you're especially if you're not used to like hearing yourself played back on something um, you know you can just sound weird you know anyway when you're listening to yourself so when you are um, you know recording your 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 episodes you know make sure that you are keeping editing in mind as well and if you are talking and you're like hey I feel like I'm sounding robotic say the same lines a few different times if you're doing a voiceover it's easy because then you can be like okay this is the line right here this is the line right here and you can just say it um, but just say it multiple times and then what that does is that gives you more to work with in the edit so it increases the amount of time that it takes to put the content together but it ensures that you have what you need in order to make a nice fluid and easy you know easy going piece of content so I would definitely make sure that uh, that you do consider that um, oh, and, and also, um, just as a heads up, you know, there are, you know, if you are wanting AI, you know, voice stuff, um, there are services like that out there. Um, some of them, I actually had a friend of mine show me one today that was pretty impressive um, in terms of how accurate it was. Uh, but it was it was expensive. It was like uh, t it was like 20 them, something I actually had dollars a friend for like a certain character limit. And that character limit wasn't that fantastic. Like it was like it would add up really quick over time. So um, the 
uh, next super chat that we have is from soft spot for art says, um, how does SEO come into play for those stories? So one thing to super think about chat. is when it comes to SEO on YouTube is if you have a search based channel in turn, like my channel, right? Like I get, um, you know, lo like a lot of browse traffic, um, and, and suggested traffic as well. But you know, a lot of my traffic also comes from YouTube search based on the nature of my content. Um, because people are looking for how do I do this? Like they're looking for how to solve very specific problems and I can show up and search for those, you know, specific problems. Just like if somebody's trying to learn how to bake a cake or tie a tie or anything like that. Now, when it comes to your type of content animation, I would actually be trying to get attention from home pages and recommended videos. That's where your real wins are going to be. A lot of people think that in order to succeed on YouTube, that you have to have your videos showing up in YouTube search, but that's not the case. If you make good videos and people respond to them off of home pages and suggested videos, basically through their recommendation system, if they respond well there, that's the fastest path to like really blowing up your channel. So, so of course you can do it through search as well. And if you make search based content, that content will also get recommended, um, you know, in, in their recommendation features. But when it comes to, you know, like the animation content, thinking about it from the perspective of, okay, if somebody loads up YouTube, either on their phone or on a computer, and they're not expecting to watch my, my content, my animations, what can I do? What type of, and you're an artist, right? So think about this. What can I make with the thumbnail? What can I do with the thumbnail that would grab the people's attention that I'm trying to connect with? And what could I do with the title in terms of packaging this whole thing up to where they look at the thumbnail and it's something interesting. So they drop down, look at the title, and then you use those two things together to compel people to come in or to, you know, click into the content and enjoy the content. So um, when it comes to SEO, it's not something that you have to do. And typically, especially like in your case, your biggest wins will most likely come from recommendation features. But if you wanted to do SEO, then in that particular case, what you would do is you would actually do the keyword research first. And then, and this applies, you know, anybody that's trying to rank videos in YouTube search is you would, you know, um, do the keyword research first before you make the animation instead of making the animation and then thinking like, okay, how am I going to get this to show up in search? But you do the keyword research first, and then you would say, okay, these are the keywords that I'm going to target with this. So since these are the keywords I'm going to target with this next step is what would, what would the thumbnail look like for this to help people, you know, be like, oh, Hey, this might be one that I want to click on because it's about this. Um, and and you know, what type of title would I write to this that would also be compelling? You would actually do the research, look at the other videos that are coming up for those search results, see if your content would be appropriate for those results. Um, and then you would actually make the video if the answer is yes, in terms of it being appropriate for those results based on the other things that are being shown there, then you would say, okay, um, that's a go. And then you'd use that information um, in terms of like, hey, these are the keywords I'm going after. This is how I'm going to build an expectation from the outside of what somebody might expect when they click on this video through your thumbnail and title, and then you take all of that information and then you start your animation by trying to fulfill what you believe that somebody might expect to see or experience or hear or whatever based on how you package it up um, um, as they come into your video. And then you use that as part of your hook to actually grab their attention and get them you know, interested in, in what it is that you're doing. You didn't breathe so, one time, not a single breath. Breathing through my nose, breathing through my nose. The gills. Yeah. <laughs> I got oxygen sticking to my side yeah. in here, yeah. like straight in my lungs. Yep. Uh, so uh, Renee Ritchie says that SEO um, um, isn't a big thing on YouTube since the system will quickly rank based on, uh, hold on, quickly rank based on performance, optimized for the human, not for search. Yep. So, um, so you know, when it comes to that, and That's just as a, you know, to kind of piggyback on what he's saying there, even if you are optimizing everything for YouTube search. You're targeting YouTube search. One, it doesn't guarantee you're gonna show up there because just like the recommendation features, it's competitive. So your videos have to actually outperform in terms of satisfaction and watch time per query and all that stuff against the other videos that are there in search. So you still have to compete there um, as well. Um, let's see here. Thanks. That was my biggest issue. Um, I want to make personal stories, um, but videos about sleep isn't exactly SEO ready. Correct. Yeah. So in your case, what you would do is you would think to yourself like, okay, if I'm going to make this animation about sleep, then, um, if it's like, you know, like you can't get enough sleep or something like that. And that's kind of like the story that you're putting together. Then in that particular case, you would think like, okay, if I'm making this about sleep, then if somebody were logging onto YouTube that maybe, you know, would relate to this, then, you know, what could I show in the thumbnail? So in your case, maybe Maybe it would be somebody, you know, laying in a bed or somebody, you know, maybe a head on a pillow if you have a particular character that you animate or something like that with some like little Z's going off or 
a top view of them just kind of laying in bed and they can't sleep. And, you know, maybe you have some little clouds coming out with all this, you know, information going on, like they have a bunch of stuff going on in their brain or whatever. Um, and that's the way that you, you know, kind of identify that this has something to do with sleep. And then of course, you know, you would leverage the title to tell a little bit more of that story to try to pull them in there. Um, so when you're, when you're, you know, thinking of it in that, that way, then all you got to do is ask yourself for people that might be interested in this when you're, when you're designing your thumbnail and title for the people that might be interested this in this, if it were to show up on their homepage, why would they click on this? Why would they identify that this is something that they might relate to or how would they identify it? And then if you can define it, then give it a go. But if you're like, I don't know, then keep working on it until you figure out like, okay, what could, what imagery could I use here to help people, you know, identify this? Breathe, man. I'm not breathing. I'm not breathing for suckers. I'm not breathing. So um, her heel review. <laughs> <laughs> breathing who breathes you kidding me yeah. kidding me i breathe I, yeah I, I i took some breaths this morning yeah <laughs> start today yeah, yeah, right. Right. wake up <laughs> go <laughs> go all day uh, her, re her real review um they upload one time per week or more they've been on youtube for one year or more um the type of channel is a movie and tv show review channel the goal of the channel is to get a thousand subscribers build a community analyze film and art and the question is i struggle getting viewers and subs to comment on my videos despite calls to action what am i doing wrong keep going right you got to keep going so like when when you are publishing videos to youtube sometimes it can take a while right for you know people to start rallying up against your videos you know there's things that you can do um and i don't recommend you know doing these types of things but there are things that you can do that generate comments um like for example you know like um, I did an experiment one time where I added, um, for a few videos, I added spelling mistakes in the graphics that I was putting up and that lit the comments up because everybody wants to let you know that you did something wrong, right? So like those types of things are, are great in terms of generating some type of engagement. Um, you also have just being polarizing in general. So in terms of like having really hard opinions on stuff, things like that, because by doing that, you have the people that are on your side in terms of the way that you think of things that, you know, will come in and kind of support that, or they'll at least agree, agree with it and move on. Then you have the other people that want to tell you like why you're wrong right but i don't recommend doing either of those things because one you know the mistake thing you know could position you in some weird way in terms of you know people thinking you don't know how to spell um and then on the polarizing side you know we have enough of that but of course you know it is effective so you know make your move there but when it comes to just getting more comments just focus on like adding value to the people that you are serving with your content focus on like entertaining them for example if you're making like entertainment type content in your case because you're doing movie and tv show reviews you know just just focus on putting together the best reviews that you can possibly do. And as people start to respond to those more and more at scale, then you will naturally get more and more engagement on your videos. And then once that starts happening, that's where you can start experimenting with like the different calls to actions that you use. And then you can start saying like, okay, when I say it this way and ask for the comment based on this, then people typically respond. Um, when I do it, you know, these other ways, they're just not responding as much. And you start to find the things that work better for your audience. You know, a lot of times, too, people new to the platforms, you hear them say, and but I didn't look at your channel, so I'm not saying this is your case, but a lot of times... Oh, you're saying it. You're saying it. I'll say it. <laughs> I'll, I should look at the channel and say it. But a lot of times people will say, what am I doing wrong? Right? Like, I'm, I'm doing these things. What am, I do I'm, what am I doing wrong? And a lot of times you're not doing anything wrong other than just having expectations that aren't realistic. No. Right? Like, hey, I just started. Why am I not growing? No. I don't know. You don't have, you've got like four videos up or right. you got like you know, 10 videos up or whatever. You've been doing this for like a year, right? Right. Like just give it time. Yeah. Or you don't have any skills yet. What am I doing wrong? You don't know how to do it. Yeah. Right. Maybe, yeah. maybe you're, maybe you're yeah, using the right titles. Right. You're doing, you're doing the thumbnails, but you just, you don't know how to craft a video yet. So just keep going. Yeah. Chai Town Chai, thank you for the super chat. Super appreciated. Super chat. So our next question here, um, this is coming back from the forum again. Um, this is, oh, that was somewhere in DNA. We did that one already. So we're on number 10 already, cruising through these. Just right. add more butter. This is a channel I can support. Yep. Says um, the type of channel is baking and cooking. Um, the goal of the channel is income, moolah, dineros, dollars. What else we got? What, Yen. what do you got? Yens, green. Uh, uh, yeah, I got to stop there, okay. I guess. Yeah. Um, the, Franks. Uh, what is it? Euro. Franks. Yeah. Euros. Yeah. Gold. What else? What? 
So the question is, how does one Bones. know if their channel is healthy and roughly right um, where they're supposed to be based on how long they've been active on YouTube? So this kind of falls back into that, you know, one of the first questions that we um, answered here today. When it comes to, you know, your channel being healthy, is it heading in the direction that you are wanting it to go? So for example, you know, are you getting growth on your channel as a whole based on the specific metrics that you're trying to get growth on? So if you're trying to get more subscribers, are you getting more subscribers right now? Yes or no? Yes you're doing the right thing. Can you amplify it? Probably. But if you're heading in that right direction, then in your then your channel is healthy and it's heading in that right direction. If you're just like tanking and the thing that you're focused on is subscribers, but nobody's subscribing to your channel, then in that case, you know, you would look at it as unhealthy. Um, if you're focusing on views and you're getting, you know, just, uh, you know, like your view counts are slowly going up or you're getting a consistent amount of views that you're cool with, then in that particular case, yes, the channel is healthy. But if you're, you're zero it out and your focus is on views and you're like hardly getting any views, then in that case, you know, you have work to do. Um, so like, this is one of those things to where knowing what it is that you're doing your channel for, at least what you're focusing on, you know, for that, you know, moment in time, um, can be really advantageous for you because then you can actually identify what healthy is, right? When you, when you have those KPIs or key performance indicators in terms of like, okay, um, you know, right now, my main things that I'm trying to do is you mentioned income. So it's like, I'm trying to increase my income and I'm trying to increase my subscriber count so I can get the partner program then because I've got, you know, the watch time as an example, then in that particular case, those would be the things that you'd be focused on. And those would be the things that you'd be trying to, um, you know, trying to increase. So if it's, you know, on the income side, then in that particular case, looking at how much you're generating over the course of, you know, the, that 30 days or that quarter or whatever it is based on, you know, your goal, then, you know, that would be the thing that you would track. And if you're, if you're heading towards that goal and you're making improvements, then it's healthy. You're going in the right direction. Um, if it's not, then in that case, got to get to work, got to learn more, got to learn better skills, got to, you know, make more videos, got to, you know, do the thing more. So, um, so in terms of like knowing it's healthy, just if you have a target and you're moving in the direction of that target, then it's healthy, right? You're going, you're going the right direction. I've seen a handful of people come in here and say something about the time change messed them up. Yeah, it messed me up, too. Did we go the wrong way? I don't think so. Did we? Because we just got like a burst of people coming in. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, maybe. Um, hold on. Are we are we an hour early or are we right on time? Current time in New York. Here it is. Moment of truth. Yeah, it's 10 in New York. We've been going for an hour. So yeah, yeah, this is right. right. Yeah, here. 9 a.m. Okay. Eastern. Yeah, yeah, we, we got it. We're good. Hey, really quick, Bright Photoshop Tutorials just hit 5,000 subscribers on their YouTube channel. Congratulations to you. Nice work on your first 5,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. Clapping for you. Love it. Okay, Southwest so, um, Barrel says an hour early. You know why they're probably over in like this region? Like they're they're probably not in um, in a place where the time zone switched. So like I know, um, I think Danielle mentioned because she's in the UK, I think it hasn't switched over there yet. So in some places it's changed. So in um, the civilized world, time did not change. Right. It, where the savages are, it changed. Everything yeah. just flipped upside down. Yep, I got. You. Yeah, so so right. um, how we got here? Genealogy says um, some places in Europe didn't change, don't change until next week. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh, so okay. in some cases, yes, we are a little bit early. Um, how, other cases, um, we're right on time. How can how can the world not get together on that? Right, and be like, all right, guys, this is a bunch of bull. Right. So let's uh, let's let's just pick a time and run with it from today <laughs> forward. Right. Let you, guys, yeah, it seems such an yeah, let so you, easy. Yeah, they had some time to figure this out. Right, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of time. Um, travel with Caribbean. Um, we answered this one already. So let me make sure that the question is the same. It is. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next one since we got there is taken care of already. Little Crafty Nook, what's going on? Hope you're doing awesome. Ron's trains and thing. Welcome to the stream. Motif Music Studios. Hope that you're doing fantastic. Welcome to the stream today. Um, life on YouTube and Twitter. What's going on? Hope you're doing great. So um, next question that we have here is from Real Watch This. Um, the, they've been on YouTube for less than six months. It's a comedy slash law enforcement channel. The goal of the channel is career slash monetization. And the question is, I feel the language and aggressive nature of my videos may be causing YouTube to shadow my videos. Is there any truth to that? I understand violence is not allowed, but mild violence is all over YouTube. So here's the thing. If you want to see if YouTube is restricting your videos in any way, all you have to do, because they, you know, like in terms of like shadow banning your channel, um, they're not going to do that. But what they what they'll do is they will restrict content in terms of they'll make it to where you know somebody has to be a logged in user, you know, of a certain age in order to view the content. So what you want to do is you want to go to your YouTube channel, go look at the videos that you have published, right, in your regular mode, either in your browser or on your phone, and see the videos that are there. Take a screenshot if you want. Then go um, into your settings for your 
your YouTube account. This isn't on the creator studio side. This is at like you were just a viewer with the regular YouTube side of things. Go into that account. Um, if you click on your profile picture, then you're going to go down. You're going to see settings. If you go into there, then you're going to go under general. I think it is if you're on a phone and then you're going to see an option called restricted mode. Turn that on. And if you turn that on and then you go back and look at your channel, then in that particular case, you're going to see the videos that are that are not being shown to people that are not logged in or that are under like certain ages or have you know other things set um, in their accounts. So um, that's the way that you identify that content that is getting that. So one thing, and, and this isn't like anything you like, you know, towards you in any way, shape or form. Um, so please don't take it this way. Unless you're in a part of the world where you just went through a time change. <laughs> yeah. then then you're probably restricted yeah no, then you're kidding. probably restricted. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but but one thing and again this isn't like an attack on you in any way shape or form but there are a lot of people on youtube that make content that is um um uh, how can I say this? Uh, controversial um, in nature, and because it is controversial in nature, they will think that you know that they're being held down by YouTube, or they'll think that you know YouTube is shadow banning them, or they'll think that YouTube's not showing my videos to people because I'm talking about this you know politician or that politician or this you know this topic or whatever. But in reality, if you actually look at their channels, because I've been through this exercise with multiple channels that make that type of content, if you look at their channels, then and you go into the actual stats, you quickly find out why the videos aren't doing well, right? So in a lot of those cases, it will be because they just, they're not making good thumbnails, the titles that they're putting together aren't that great, or those things are okay, but when people go into the video content, the video content itself isn't getting a good response, but instead of looking at it through the mirror and saying like, okay, it's me and it's my content, that's why I'm not getting the response that I want. Instead of doing that, they're just blaming YouTube because it's easier and because in a lot of those cases, it's the mindset of, you know, like I'm under attack, so to speak. Um, so because of that, that just naturally defaults into YouTube isn't showing my stuff because it's this type of website or something like that. So um, again, I'm not saying that's you because, you know, you, what you're making is different than what I'm talking about. But oh. I'm just using that as an example to let you know that there's, you know, a lot of people on YouTube that do make that type of content um, that will blame YouTube for their, you know, for them not being able to, you know, reach people with what it is that they're doing. Um, next up on our list here, we got Pocket Docs. Love the channel name. And and hey, really quick, did you get um, Chi Town Che Super Chat? Um, not yet. Really quick, uh, uh, Renee Ritchie, creator, uh, YouTube's creator liaison, says restricted is mainly for organizations like schools, so they can choose not to have some content available to students, for example. But it's probably not a huge difference for most creators. So yeah, so so good feedback there. Thank you for that. Super appreciated. And uh, Chi Town Che, I think I did. Thank did you, you for this. But just okay. hey, thanks again. Super yeah, yeah super hey, appreciate it. Hey. Yeah. Thank, thank you for you. the second time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hope thank you're you. having an awesome day. Yeah, appreciate Chi -town it. Chai Town Che. Mm -hmm. Hanging up in Chai Town. I used to yeah, go to Chai Town. Greek, Greek Town. Greek Town. What's that? Greek Town. So a part up of in Chicago. Chicago back up in mm -hmm. Chi Town. Yeah, you you lived up there for a little bit. A little how, bit. how long were you? How long did you live in Chicago? I was up there for a while, but man, it's cold. Mm. It's cold. The water or the wind when it comes off that water in the winter time. Rough. Dude, I've been to some cold places in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the coldest I've ever been. Colder than Iceland? Been. Colder than Iceland. Interesting. Colder Interesting. than Iceland in the dead of winter. Colder than base camp? Colder I'm than just like flexing on his behalf colder. in terms of the cool places he's been. Colder? I'm like colder than Iceland? Col colder than base camp of Mount Everest? Colder right, colder than 18,000 feet in the Himalayas. There you go. There you go. Okay. There nice. Go. That's pretty cold. That's pretty cold. That's pretty yeah. cold. So uh, Pocket Docs. Um, says that they upload when they have time. They've been on YouTube for less than a year. Um, the type of channel is documentary and video essays. The goal of the channel is to reach monetization. And the question is, is there anything that a new YouTuber can do to get more impressions? Without impressions, it's difficult to analyze data and figure out what's working and what isn't. Um, is it just a waiting game? It is. But the way that you get more impressions is by using the information that you currently have on how people are responding to your content in order to make changes to what it is that you're doing to help people respond to your content better. So when you publish videos, YouTube shows them to people. And based on how those people respond to your videos is going to determine, at least in the immediate, not necessarily long term as I mean, in the long term too, I guess. But basically, when um, you publish your videos based on how people respond to them, that's going to determine, you know, how your videos are going to be treated in, within the system. So for example, if people are publishing content that people are um, that the system is detecting that are enjoying, you know, these other videos, 
videos at a much higher rate than they're enjoying yours or even a higher rate, then the system is going to prioritize that content that is proven to keep people watching for longer periods of time, keep people clicking more, keep people engaged in YouTube. So, you know, if they're getting, you know, satisfied from that content more than they are from yours, then in that particular case, it's going to, you know, cause you to have to make some changes to what it is that you're doing in order to get that better response. So keep in mind, sometimes it can just be, you know, you might need to update your thumb and title. Um, other times it can be that, you know, everything is awesome based on, you know, how you're currently doing things, but you might need to just fine tune things a little bit. Um, in other cases, everything needs work, right? So um, in terms of getting more impressions, think of impressions, more impressions like a reward, right? Kind of so, like a reward. Yeah, a reward. Yeah, like just reward. like that. A reward. reward. So when it comes to it's a weird word, it is reward. reward. It is. It's like reword, but ward. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's weird. But so anyway. those words, if you just keep saying over, yeah, like and over spoon. and over. Yes. Yeah, spoon, like, spoon. am I am I the crazy spoon. one? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Is Andrew the can. Andrew yes. can in the house. How you Andrew doing? can. What's up, man? Hope you're yeah. doing awesome. Reward. But um um uh yeah, I completely lost my uh, oh yeah, but impressions as a reward. So um so basically like you know, when you first publish your video, you get some impressions as a reward for publishing that video. Reward. Based on how people respond to that video, you're going to get a lot more impressions or a little bit more impressions based on, you know, the response that the audience gives that video. But at the end of the day, we're all trying to make content that, you know, that people enjoy. And the better you get at that, the better everything, you know, the better thing better the better everything goes. So uh, let's see here. Next up on our list here, we've got um, 86. 86 says they have a help channel for new line cooks and chefs. The goal of the channel is to help people grow in the culinary industry. The goal, or sorry, the question of the channel says, I'm curious about any tips or best practices or common mistakes you may know about for interviewing people on live streaming, having guests on the show to keep it engaging and entertaining. Um, so when it comes to having guests on your show, the best thing that you can do, um, in my experience, is prep people. Like, let them know. Send them, like, a Google Doc or something that says, hey, before you come on, make sure you have TVs off in the background. You know, try to get close to whatever it is that, you know, if you're even if you're doing it on a phone, try to get kind of close to it so, you know, your audio can be okay you know things like that close the door so like family members aren't going to be walking in you know those sorts of things um but you know just kind of have a sheet that you put together of like hey before you come on here's just some technical things that you need to you know kind of get in line um so doing that will make sure that you're covered on the tech side and then from there before you go live or if you have any type of you know interactions beforehand just you know talking through like hey you know when i first start this i'm going to do this and then we're going to do this and then i'm going to bring you on and then we're going to talk about this for a little bit and then i have this little sponsor spot that i do then i'm going to bring you back on we're going to talk you know a little bit more um you know in depth about some of the things that we talked about earlier then we're going to close it out i'm going to ask you about uh you know where people can find you so that we can promote whatever it is that you're trying to bring attention to and then we're going to close it out i'm going to thank you um and then you know i'm going to finish the show off myself and then you know i'll meet you um like in the back room or you know if you're using Streamyard anyway like in the background um you know once the stream is actually uh, complete or you'll just let them go so by you know having that that front loaded prep work it makes everything a lot more easier and it just makes it a better experience for your guest as well because they know what to expect and when they're doing it they're not caught off guard when you're like okay now we're going to go you know talk about sponsor now we're going to talk about this or now I'm going to play this video for you real quick or whatever the thing is. So uh, let's hear. So next up, and by the way, if you're just joining us, we're talking about all things related to YouTube. So this is a um, Q&A. And uh, basically, there's a form down in the description where I'm pulling all these questions from. Um, and um, all you got to do, it's free. You just got to put your question down there in the form. Um, and I'm answering them in the order that they come in. So, you know, by the time the stream is over, you know, we probably won't get to everybody that, you know, is going to pop in here and ask questions down there over the entire duration of the stream. But if you get in there now, there's a really good chance. Like we're, we're kind of on that line right now to where there's a really good chance that you know we'll get you answered on the show today so uh next up we've got okay we did that one so we are number 15 we've got uh chelsea sessions chelsea sessions says that they do they have a sports channel um the goal of the channel is to have discussions on a football club and the question is hello Nimmin. what's going on hope you're doing great um yeah i guess you can answer that one too because he didn't say nick well he didn't say Nimmins. yeah so uh, that's just, true that's know, true maybe it's just you i'm just gonna put that 
Okay. Yeah. He's talking to you. Yeah. So it uh, says, one issue I have is getting views due to an issue that has been affecting a lot of small channels, including myself. Um, I have about 800 plus subscribers, and I also have eight views surpass eight videos surpass a thousand views. But recently, after rebranding, my views have dropped and subscriptions have been reduced. What advice would you give to stay motivated and try to keep the channel going um, to keep the channel slowly developing views again? Okay, so I'm not sure about the problem that you're talking about that's affecting a lot of small channels. Um, so again, there's a competitive nature to YouTube and everything on the system is basically being you know morphed or modified in real time based on how people are responding to everything and you know channels on YouTube um, you know like when you publish a video um, you have even though I might be able to feed data to it faster just based on you know notifications going out um, and just the backlog of data that YouTube has of eight years for people interacting with my channel um, but you know when you you know if we both were to publish a video at the same exact time if you just started today and uh, and you know me, I've been on YouTube for a long time. So if we both published a video and people respond better to yours, even though mine might do better at the time of publish, yours will end up doing better long term because people are enjoying yours more than mine, at least if we're, you know, if YouTube is showing them to the same, you know, audiences, um, then in that particular case, if people enjoy yours more than mine and they just respond, you know, at a higher level, then yours is going to do better than mine. So it doesn't matter if you have, you know, a bajillion subscribers on your channel or, or if you have one, um, the, the system still prioritizes quality content. What? So because of that, in terms of like, you know, uh, you know, this thing that's affecting a lot of small channels, those types of things are typically myths that get started within YouTube groups on like, sub, you know, like, like uh, Reddit and like, Facebook you know, Facebook or, groups yeah. and things like yeah. that, yeah. Um, discords and things like that to where it's like smaller YouTube channels that are still trying to figure things out. So they start telling each other like, hey, I'm not getting a lot of views on my videos or last month I was getting more views than this month. And then you have other people in there that are like, hey, me too. And because of that, people will walk away thinking that this is a problem that's affecting small channels, where in reality, you have a few voices that, you know, that are like, hey, I'm doing better. I, I did better last month than this month is what they're actually saying. But people will interpret it as there's this huge problem going on with small channels. So um, at the end of the day, you know, if you make good content, it will surface on YouTube. And if you if you know, if you need to, you know, continue working on it and all that stuff, um, then in that case, it, you know, you're you're going to have to go through that process. Um, you know, on, on YouTube to get everything moving. So if Renee's still in here, maybe he can tell us what a bajillion play, bajillion subscriber play button looks like. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we have any. We've had anybody hit bajillion yet. No. Yeah. Bajillion. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. I, Beast will hit it. Yeah. yeah. He'll get there. He'll get there. Yeah. He'll get there. Yeah. yeah. We have to start making up numbers for him. The bajillion. Um, so the next channel here is from the English Woodsman. That's cool. What, what, what do you think that channel is? Right there. English Woodsman's the name of the channel. What do you think it is? I plead the fifth. Okay. All right. There we go. So, um, yeah. Thanks, D, for participating in the live stream today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Renee so, comes up. No, Renee, it's perfect. He says it's made out of Beskar. Nice. Yep. Bowed. Well, yeah. yeah. Well done, yeah, Renee. Good. Well, yeah. done. well done. Well done. Well done. No, yeah. uh, the English woodsman. Yeah. I'm, that's I'm, the way. That, yeah. This is the way. Yeah. This is the way, yeah. Renee. Yeah. yeah. Good job. That's nice. Uh, the English woodsman. I'm gonna say he is into bushcraft. Mm. Maybe a lumberjack. I'm not sure. I'm not Possibly sure. Outdoorsman. Boom. There it is. So the type of channel is outdoors. Oh, got it. look at that. Yep. So the um, <laughs> good name. Good name. So the uh, goal of the channel is to have fun outdoors. Nailing it. Uh, the question is: just hit sixty thousand subscribers. High five and fist bump to you. Hey, hit the Bluetooth on that. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play the jam here. So I, I'm gonna have to pair real quick. So I got I got a song coming for you here on the uh, 60k here. Oh hey, I got a I got a I got a uh, got an update here. Okay, of course you do. So did you hit the uh, pairing option there, Renee? That was so well done. That was that, that was, was like just, nailed. Yeah, you just yeah, won the it. internet tonight. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> just to let you know. Uh, okay, no device paired. Let's see pairing. Okay. Okay, it's discoverable. Okay, working on it. Working we're we're on doing it. this stuff on the fly, ladies yep, and gentlemen. Yeah, doing this on the fly. Yep, we got a we got a we got a little celebration jam coming here. Creator classroom. Yes, we are clapping <laughs> absolutely, right here in just a second. Un momento, por favor. Um, let's see what we've got I didn't here. Know you spoke Russian. That was uh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. Okay, so uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead and just jam out to this here for a second. Let me go find it really quick. What are you playing? And uh, we're going to play the clapping song here. Uh, a clap really song? Quick. Yep, I'm, I'm working on a music video for this, um, but here we go. This it should be coming through. Do you hear it? Ladies and gentlemen, we have somebody in the house that's just crossed a major milestone. Is it playing? What is this? Okay. I want you to put your hands together for yeah, I can't hear it, but I know it's playing. 
I got a little something I want to say. If it's 100, 1,000, 100,000, 1 million, I get oh, the you feeling heard this? you're elated. Because yeah. you've been waiting and counting down yeah, all can't the hear days it, and the minutes to <laughs> hit it. And now you found it. High five and fist bump to you. What you've done is astounding. So be proud of it. Get loud and shout a bit. Dance around like you're out of it. Just feel the sounds of this playing. Banging and bounce around at this. And celebration mm. with you. A standing ovation is what you do. You've done something awesome. So I want to give to you a high five. Butt. Shake it, shake it. down so it's finished it's finished all right there we go so um the second part of the question like, that's the clap song yeah it's the clap song yeah so it's yeah played so it's when... a celebration song so basically typically like a hundred thousand subscribers fifty thousand subscribers they kind of fell you know right after that 50 um in some cases you know then in that particular case you know maybe it'll be smaller but like you know just like milestones right like big milestones um it's just a way to kind of you know kind of celebrate there a little bit so what, the what's, uh, wrong, what's wrong with this yeah the cloud you can do that yeah you can do that totally do that yeah it's just more of a thing especially when the video comes like the idea that i have for the video yeah super fun what super if it's fun. just like could be that could good <laughs> save you a whole lot of time so the question is should i start making more videos weekly or stay at this speed i just want to hit a hundred thousand subscribers um so it's your call Right. Like if, um, you know, if you're publishing content and people are enjoying that content and all that, sure, you could accelerate things if you're, you know, publishing more videos that people respond to because you've obviously got quality to a level that people are responding to, you know, at a high rate. So because of that, you know, you can, you know, kind of amplify that by publishing more content as long as you can maintain that quality that typically works so um so because of that you could but one thing that i do recommend is that you do think about just like sustainability energy things like that so you know in your case you might be like hey i could totally start publishing way more videos on my channel and it, i wouldn't even notice the difference in terms of you know the extra workload and stuff um if that's the case then you know you could absolutely do that but if you're like i don't know it probably you know probably cause me like a lot of you know kind of tension or you know kind of a little bit of stress you know while trying to do that if you're like hey i'm trying to get that goal and i'm willing to just kind of go through it for that goal and then i'll kind of pull back once i hit it then in that case go for it but if you're like you know um you know maybe uh you know i just want to kind of maintain the pace that i'm going and just kind of enjoy this you know process and how everything's going together then in that case you know keep doing what you're doing and you know keep enjoying that process but of course if you're willing to just go through it and make it happen then you know absolutely go for it and make it happen i'm a big fan of that too <laughs> what would you do what's the question so they want to know if they should, they're at 60,000 subscribers trying to hurry up and get 100,000 subscribers. Um, do you think they should start publishing more videos on the channel to accelerate it? Or do you think that they should uh, just let it ride and keep doing what it is that they're doing right now and get there, you know, uh, at the pace that they're currently going? Well, the first thing I would do is I'd make sure I didn't have a brother that would lose my play button once you mm. hit 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be step one. Yeah. Make sure that when you actually got your play button, you yeah. received it after you did all that hard work to receive the play button, yeah. you want to make sure that you're actually going to have that in your possession yes. and your sibling is not going to lose it yeah that's step one uh step, step two is you have to make sure that that sibling foolishly still on the sibling though doesn't get it in the process of moving to where they might have misplaced it i don't know yet but might have misplaced it but yeah go ahead d uh step two i mean just find a pace i can tell you this i'm i, I hit a hundred thousand and i can assure you that nothing changed in my life yeah it was a cool milestone yeah. and it was like yeah. pat on the back and i would have mm -hmm. loved to have the play button to and put over there somewhere yeah but like once you hit a hundred thousand, it's just like, okay, what's the next milestone, right? So I think it's it's a great milestone to hit, and it's great to have that play button if you have it, and just you know you get the little check mark next to your name and all of that. Um, but I wouldn't stress yourself out trying to get there. I would just go at your own pace, like just whatever pace. If you got to sixty thousand, then you're gonna hit a, you're gonna hit a hundred thousand with no problem, right? So. so guess what Corg, uh, Corgi says, um, how do you lose a YouTube play button? I don't know. So I don't know that it's lost yet. It's so lost. here's the, here's the thing is, um, um, he got it. He was trapped in Mexico. So he's like, Hey, my play button came. Will you go pick it up and keep it safe? 
So I'm like, yeah, dude, I got you. So I went and got it. The funny thing got it is, safe. but in the process, I ended up, you know, moving out of the condo that I was in. We got a house. So then, you know, I was moving, you know, everything. And um, I believe it's in a box somewhere, but I've looked through boxes. I didn't see it in those boxes. I've looked through my, you know, everything in the office, didn't find it in there. But it's possible that I'm overlooking it somewhere, that I put it somewhere that I'm just not thinking about. Um, but, but uh, yeah, so still, it's still in the air. I'm still not sure yet. Good. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm at like 150 something or 155 yeah. now, 155,000 or whatever. Like I, I hit the milestone and I received the one play button because I had people just order another one. I don't want another one. Like I want that one or I don't want one. Right. Of course. <laughs> well, right. Because I ha if I have to buy one from YouTube, I, I would buy it. Yeah. If I lost it, I would buy it. No, 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 no. no it's not the it. same. It's yeah. not the same. It's yeah. not the same because that's the one they sent me for free. Yeah. 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 That's the one I want. Yeah. So I'll wait till I get to a million where I won't have one. And then get that. Yeah. Okay. And okay. not let you get within a mile, mile of it. Yeah. Of the other one. I'll be like, oh, let me hold it. Oh no, I just dropped it on oh, the floor. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even gonna tell you that I get it. Next you're just gonna hide it, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Like, oh no, here it is. Yeah. Nick's coming over. Hide the play button. Yeah. Yeah. So um the next channel is Dark Bites. Dark Bites hold says on. Hold on. Legit. Okay. okay. Hear me yeah. hear me out here for a second. Oh uh, here oh no. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen in the chat. Imagine, if you will, all the hard work you do. Oh, I feel so bad get, already, but I deserve this. Go. To get to 100,000. 100,000 subscribers. That was no small task. Mm. And every single person in the chat right now knows exactly how hard it is mm. to hit that milestone. Yeah. Right? And all you wanted was a plaque. Yep. All you wanted was that silver plaque that you could put behind. or just You just want to take the single picture with it and just put it on Instagram or show your mother. Look yep. what I did, Mom. Right. Hey, hi, hey, D, how you doing? How's YouTube working out for you? Well, Mom, I hit a milestone and they gave me an award, but guess what? You'll never see it, You're Mom. You're never going to see it. So imagine how you would feel. Uh, <laughs> imagine the absolute just... The, the, just I think the, we talked about this last stream to too. The, I'm like sweating over here. The, I'm like, oh, this is horrible. I, yeah, I, I deserve it. Yeah, keep. Yeah, yeah keep, keep I've going. had my heart yeah. broken before, and it's hurt yeah. less than this. <laughs> you know. Oh. Anyway, anyway, so, right. anyway, no big deal. Don't worry about it. Don't. <laughs> yes. I'm sure it'll pop up. <laughs> So next up, we've got, uh, oh. let's hear, Dark Bites. Uh, the um, um, type of channel is a horror podcast. The goal of the channel is to monetize my channel and become horror fans' uh, second favorite destination. The, uh, um, the question is, I tried putting some stock B-roll into my clips, and I found it made a big difference to my retention. To make the most out of B-roll for my long-form video podcast chats um, with horror creators, what's your best advice for where to get affordable or free B-roll um, videos and how to best incorporate them into a podcast-based channel? Thanks for all your great help um, for content creators like me. So when it comes to um, getting stock footage, the places that I use are Storyblocks. Um, it's a paid service. I use Storyblocks and Motion Array. Um, both of those um, have a just ginormous archive of um, B-roll in there. And by paying for the service, I'm paying for the license to use those as well. So it's just a really easy thing that I can defend in the event that I get a copyright claim or something like that. Um, so yes, there are free resources out there like um, Get to the Farm, just mentioned Pexels. Um, they have you know stuff that you can use, but keep in mind that's all user submitted content. So since it's user submitted, submitted content, it's possible that down the road, they end up selling some of that content also to places like Storyblocks or other places that might end up owning the rights to that content. And then once they do, then they would still be able to issue claims on your content. So because of that, the best way to go is to, if you can, to um, to, to pay for a service of you know some uh, some kind. So Alro says that did they take away the 100K reward? No, they no. didn't. YouTube didn't take it away. Like when they send it to you, it's yours, right? So I, during, when the world shut down, I was in another country when everything shut down. And hey, while you're telling the story, I'm yeah. going to use the bathroom really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I was in another country, as some of you know. I'm uh, hiding my guilt. I'm, I'm like going to cower yeah. somewhere. Go yeah. cower. Yeah. Go cower. I'm going to tell the story. I was, uh, world shuts down. I'm in another country, stuck for two years because Thailand, we live in Thailand. Thailand closed the borders, right? You couldn't get home. So I'm stuck there. In the middle of that, I received, I, I hit 100,000 and YouTube sends me my play button, right? You have to go through this process of ordering the play button. Where you're going to send it, obviously, I sent it to my home. So I sent it, it came here to Thailand and I told him, I was like, hey, I don't want this box sitting out there and maybe it will get rained on or insects because it's going to be sitting outside, right? 
go pick it up for safety, right? So he goes to pick it up for safety, and in the process, he ended up building a house. And during the, the moving process, he somehow he kept every everything made it from one location to the next, except for my play button, which I find highly, highly suspicious. So yeah, moral of that story is if you have a sibling possibly even a child, do not let them anywhere near your play button if it's on the way. That's the, that's the story of that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Elmore's Music Lab says, I would love to hear the story of how they are in Thailand. Anywhere to read about this? Yeah, we don't have like anything published online about how we ended up in Thailand. Uh, long story short, I was visiting here uh, in the 90s uh, just as a tourist, and I really fell in love with the country and put a plan together to live here. And then once I was living here, I told Nick, I was like, hey, you got to come over and check this out. And he came over and, and really liked it. And he put a plan together to come over here. And we just, uh, before you know it, uh, the years passed and it just ended up being home. I was kidnapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The years yeah, passed. I've been, and, here, I've been here for a really long time against yeah. my will. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blinking. I'm blinking. No. <laughs> yeah. It just, you know, it just, uh, it, it's home now. B-roll. Okay, so um, next question here on the uh, on our list is from uh, Nodding Hook Crochet. Um, Naughty Hook Crochet says they upload when they have time. Um, it's a crochet channel. The goal of the channel is to share crochet stitches, patterns, and projects. The question is, when uploading a video, what would happen if you tell it not to send out notifications or show in the subscription feed? Um, all that happens is your... All that happens, oh, that'd be awesome, Jerry, wouldn't it? Oh. Um, he was like, yeah, and then I come back from the pl from the bathroom with a play button. <laughs> with candles on it and a bunch of people singing happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Live on the stream oh, with all the women good. who have broke my heart. Like, all you come out with the, with, the, with the play button with candles on it. Oh, so good. You, you blew it again. <laughs> right? You blew it again. You had an opportunity to totally redeem yourself. That was your one shot to redeem yourself, and you completely blew it. Why do you follow this guy? I mean, really, <laughs> of all the channels on YouTube to subscribe to, you choose this guy. And, and really? Oh, I love it. And, and really, of all the things he moved from one location to another to the new yeah. house, nothing else got lost. Yeah. Actually, the, there, there are some other things Name also. Um, off the top of my head, I can't <laughs> see. see? But, but there has been a decent amount of stuff where I'm Name like, God, one. I know that I Name had one Name one of thing besides my play button. Just one. Um, Didn't happen. See, took no, too long. No, it did. Well, hold on, something thing. just went down. Uh, oh, your light just went down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, next Whoa. question. <laughs> it was See? it was this one right here. Because it, yeah, it, it knew you were lying. Yeah, the right. light was the like... The universe is like, no, not happening. The light was but like... No, no, seriously, there, there is some stuff. I just can't think of it off yeah. the top of my head because yeah. I haven't dealt with that in like two years. All right, I'm going to fix the light while you do that. All right, okay. so um, the next channel here is from, I'm not sure how to say this, K-Walk Comedy. And um, they upload one time per week or more. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. They do entertainment content. The goal of the channel is to help late bloomers, 55%, uh, or sorry, 55 plus, um, reminisce and make sense of pop culture. Oh, that's cool. Um, the question is, we've been streaming through the pandemic and have kept it going. Most of our views come from Facebook. Is it feasible to force the few who follow on YouTube um, that we just stream the show on one platform? So, oh, to force the... be on at that point in time so because of that um it's typically hard to hey i think we froze um the at least over on my side it looks like we uh froze oh no i'm back i'm back yeah I'm, is it blurry on your side like i'm really choppy over here no, is that right. happening oh okay maybe it's my browser um but basically when somebody's on facebook they're on facebook because they open up their facebook app or they open it up on their Welcome computer to the Nimenati. and they uh and they want to you know they want to be on that platform if they're on youtube it's because they want to you know commit to some watching some video content you know and all that so it's difficult in general to get people to jump you know from one platform to another so one thing that is typically just a best practice is to just meet your audience where they're at through the content that you are publishing, like if you're live streaming, which you are, then you could just let people know, hey, by the way, we have a YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it, you know, here. So if you want to catch us more live over there or whatever, then, you know, go and check out that link. But um, but really, I would just, you know, respect where they are and, you know, try to get them to go there, you know, make sure you spread awareness about it, tell them to go, you know, follow you there, things like that. Um, but, you know, if they're on Facebook, especially with the crowd that you're trying to reach specifically, like, you know, just meeting them where they're at um, is probably going to be the easier win there um, versus trying to, you know, convince them to uh, to come over to YouTube. So next up on our list here. Um, so she says the video is bad. 
Um, yeah, so we're having some some type of thing here. I'm getting like a little Wi-Fi notice also here on the uh, thing. But what I'm, you know, my internet is different than, you know, what you're experiencing over there. The yeah, it's cutting bad? out. Yeah, it's cutting out. Some people are saying it's cutting out um, also. Yeah, I'm looking like Max Headroom. So, yeah, we're having some like glitchiness going on um, apparently. And the voice in the video is no match. Okay. Yeah, I'm guessing it's the uh, computer that we're using over here because no. um, we run okay. some problems into that sometimes. Uh, it's internet. Oh, we're having the low internet right now. So while he's doing that, I'm going to answer the next question. As long as you can hear me okay, um, then in that case, I'm, I'm going to keep going while he's working on getting the video quality, uh, getting the video quality better. So um, Comics Undone is our, uh, is our next question. And um, Comics Undone uploads one time per week or more. They've been on YouTube for less than a year. And um, I think you're running StreamYard, not me. What do you mean? It's running through your Wi-Fi. No way. That's yeah. impossible because I'm not connected to the ATEM. I'm getting a Wi-Fi signal right here coming through. Here, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna to close it. Boom. Hold on. Leave. Are we still live on your side? How weird. I'm getting a Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. How weird. Well, I, I think that's just a symbol of the internet connection. I, like, I don't think yeah, it's like Wi-Fi specific. I think it's just fine. a symbol of the internet. Fine. Okay, I'm wrong. Hmm. Keep going. So uh, this one's from weird. Digital Art uh, Commentary digital art commentary um the goal of the channel is to share nerd art and talk about media news huh i see like a black screen huh interesting okay um so here to um share nerd art and talk about media news the question is i create shorts of almost um all of my longer videos but i'm wondering if i should start removing videos because i'm wondering if it looks bad that i have almost as many videos as subs under 200. no keep going like um when it comes to looking at your youtube channel and removing things because you think that it might look bad to others um, you're kind of working against yourself there the best thing you can do especially if you are going to be making yeah it says we're very laggy yeah, um, so we're definitely it. having yeah, some I'm, I'm, okay yeah, audio is perfect, perfect so keep going okay so when it comes to um when it comes to trying to make your youtube channel and i love this question because i don't think anybody's ever asked this before um so when it comes to changing things on your youtube channel in terms of the content that you have published because you think that it looks bad that you are underperforming in some way that's all on you so one thing that you want to think about is when it comes to when it comes to viewers of your YouTube channel, most of the people that you're interacting with, they're not looking at your subscriber count. They're not even really looking at the, the view counts and stuff like that that you're getting on your videos. They're more so like, hey, this looks interesting to me when it gets served to them. They click on it and then they come in and then they're making their decisions based on what it is that they're experiencing in the video content. So because of that, when you are publishing your uh, you know, when you're publishing your videos, just, you know, keep the stuff up on your channel. Of course, you can delete them if you want to. But, you know, like Renee uh, mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes it can take videos to where all of a sudden YouTube will find the audience for them because they'll continue giving videos impressions over time, just testing them. And then when they, you know, find that audience that responds well to it, then it'll show it to more of those people that respond well to it. And videos can just like blow up out of nowhere. So because of that, um, I wouldn't. But one, I wouldn't, you know, start deleting stuff. But one thing that you, another thing to think about is when it comes to a YouTube channel, you have it where, um, you know, um, on TikTok, I put out a short and, and or a, a vertical video, and I might have put it on YouTube also, to where it's talking about, you know, all it takes is one video, right, to kind of put you on the map, so to speak, and get everything moving for you in your favor. And the reason for that is because, like, let's say you have this library of like 200 videos that as of right now, people haven't really responded great to them. Well, if you put out that one video and you get a really good response from maybe it's your next video or the video after that or 10 videos down the road, when you put that video out, if people really respond to that one, then YouTube's going to start recommending, you know, out of these other 200 videos that you have, or almost 200, YouTube's going to start recommending some of those to some of those people as well. And it's possible that those people will respond better, which then will cause those videos to also start getting recommended to similar people as well in terms of, you know, the users of the platform and how they're interacting with the platform and the content they're enjoying and so on. So because of that, when you are like, hey, I haven't had like any videos like really land yet, and I'm already thinking about
about deleting videos on my channel, then you could actually be working against yourself in the long term because it's possible that just based on how you're optimizing your videos and things like that, maybe YouTube, the system just hasn't nailed the audience yet, right? Or maybe just the content that you've been making, you know, it just hasn't hit that competitive level yet based on the people that are currently interacting with it. But it is possible that other people could interact with that content in the future, which could cause the system to start showing it to more people like them, which could then start bringing those videos back to life or not. And then down the road, once you have some videos that are taken off and doing well and your channels, you know, picking up some momentum and all that, then that's where you would say like, okay, these videos have been online for like, you know, a year, two years, whatever. And like, literally, I'm not getting any impressions on these. Like these are not moving like 1%. Then in that particular case, that's where you might consider, you know, um, you know, kind of cleaning things up a little bit. I have no idea what's going on. We're, we're, we're blazing on going through. Yeah. It's actually fine on my end. Really? Right here. Yeah, so the way that I'm seeing it coming through on my side, because I'm getting it through the internet. So okay. um, so I'm seeing yeah. it like, you know, being like choppy and, and, and kind of degrading yeah. in quality a little I bit too. I see it, but I'm, our internet's blazing. Hmm. Um, working on it. Keep going. So uh, next up on the list here, we've got uh, Viral Boom. Viral Boom does daily content. They've been on YouTube for less than a year. Um, the type of channel is personal, um, funny, and gassy. Hey. And the question is... Here's a question. Could you go to your phone for a bit and then I... Can I restart? Re can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Give me just a second. Yeah. Um, so really quick, the goal is to make people happy and enjoy responses. And the question is, little over 800 subs and stuck with a non-teaching channel ever make it? Um, with just posting funny, gassy, crazy videos. So absolutely, people love entertainment. People love people love, you know, having a good time, you know, laughing and all that. So because of that, you know, channels that are like comedy channels and stuff, they absolutely love. can um, can perform well. Yeah, so here's what we're going to do. Since I'm I, navigating to it on my phone right okay, now. Okay, so he's actually going to go live on his phone. You know, live happens. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on here. Internet's fine. I'm going to reboot the machine. He's going to go live on his phone. So you're going to see just him for a while while I do some stuff. And this is actually one of the really cool things about StreamYard is that mm. you can do this. So if you've, especially if you've got guests or multiple people running things, you can actually, we can restart this machine while we're live and StreamYard's gonna keep the signal and he'll be live on his phone during mm -hmm. the whole time. So that's one of the really cool things about StreamYard. Okay, give me a second, getting my yeah, security yeah, 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 codes yeah. and whatnot, if you wanna just carry it here for a second. Yeah, absolutely. I think we should go back and start talking about how terrible he is of a brother for losing. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> we can just uh. go on and on. No, I'm just kidding. It, no, it, tr it's not that big of a deal, to be honest with you. I just like giving him a hard time about it. Copy link. I don't get very many And chances. I deserve that hard time because uh, yeah, cause right. it was irresponsible of me. It's all right. We'll work it out. Well, something weird's going on. So my um, my uh, my alerts up here at the top yeah. um, for the app that I use for this, all of them just went to John Doe. That's weird. Weird. Hmm. Maybe yeah. weren't. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me find Safari. Going into Safari. Yeah. How weird. Let me paste this link here and allow paste this is what brothers do jerry says and then, yep yeah i actually Absolutely. i don't get a lot of opportunity to rib him like this so when i do i just let him have it yeah. any chance i get okay please allow permission it's all about the play button that's right that again rock lake Med meditation says are you being hacked it's possible definitely possible it's possible okay, so allow. my facebook account was hacked i mean i don't think we're under dark being hacked. my facebook account was hacked recently and i still don't have access to it which is quite unfortunate. Okay, Nick. How weird. Mobile. Yep. Yeah, I'm just filling Live in my uh, name here. On it. Yep. Inner studio. See if there's anything here in the chat that I can cover while you're doing that. This looks a little bit choppy too, just because I'm coming in on my phone signal. But uh, really? yeah, let's see how it goes. Are you on? 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 Are you on?
quick lesson here for everybody. Like this kind of stuff, you know, like if you're somebody that's considering live streaming and you're worried about like tech going down, just a heads up, like this kind of stuff is just like a normal, you know, normal type of thing that happens from time to time, you know, in live streams. So like, don't stress out about it, anything like that. When you start to have crises like these, you know, when they happen with your streams, just try to do what you can. You know, people, as you can see here, you know, are relatively, you know, tolerant when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, just don't stress about it too much. Um, so should I try to come back in on my phone with that? Maybe walk to another side of the room or something for the feedback? No, I'm going to Yeah, come back on your phone. I'm going to kill these. Okay. Yes, yes, it's great. great. For, For as many, many times. Time. Oh, oh, that's, okay, oh, that's why they were getting an echo. Okay, here we go. Yep. So take you out. Yep. Boom. Okay, now we should be good, I think. So, yeah, I think we're good now. So, yeah, so the audio on my end was set to that. So when you come back in, uh, make sure you check the audio to see where that's coming from because this defaulted to what I already have in the Mac and what you have over there. Um, so, uh so yeah, so there's that. So hey, this little setup here. Here's the lights that we got. You can see we got these like little back lights and stuff. Got a little, you know, TV back here. So this is like a different shot that you see. So you see the lights up here, you know, above uh, D there, you know, as well. So not going to take you on like a full tour, um, but uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what's going on here. But anyway, we're going to keep answering questions uh, while we are, you know, kind of waiting for the system to restart over there. Um, so this next question is coming from Viral Boom. Viral Boom uploads daily content. Um, yeah, and I know the sound's not perfect right now because it's coming through the phone, but uh, but this is what we're working with right now until we get the uh, until we get the uh, you know computer um, restarted there. But um, they okay, we did that one already with the fun and gassy videos. So next up, we've got uh, Psychics this week. Psychics this week, um, they do biweekly content. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. Um, they do educational content, physical skills, and lab skills. The goal of the channel is to share information with physics students around the world trying to hit 4,000 hours to help sustain the channel. And the question is, can a channel survive and thrive on mostly search traffic? Absolutely it can, as long as the content that you're making is stuff that people are looking for, right? So like if you're helping people solve very specific problems, which you're doing educational content, which means you probably are, then in that particular case, yes, channels can survive off of search traffic. But keep in mind, even if you are targeting search traffic, YouTube's still going to recommend your content to people and people will still, you know, click on it from other places as well. And you might find that other features still end up being like larger traffic sources. But yes, um, a channel can still thrive and, and, and uh, survive off of search traffic. Um, but it will, again, it'll get, it'll get traffic from everywhere. Um, but you say over 60% of my views come from YouTube search. At one point I had over 4,000 hours, but not enough subscribers. Just before I had 1,000 subs, my view time started slowly decreasing. Thanks for all you do. I've been um, using Creator Mix for my shorts and trying to implement the knowledge that you share. Awesome. Glad that you're enjoying Creator Mix, and, um, and hopefully that uh, answers your uh, question there. But one thing that I do want to let you know. So when it comes to you know, YouTube and being able to you know, have your channel kind of survive and, you know, and thrive off of search, you can do that, especially for educational type content. Um, but I, it's just important to know that Search is typically like really stable traffic, right? Because, you know, like, you know, there's a certain amount of people that typically just search for things on a regular basis. And because of that, it creates like a pretty stable traffic source. However, like the big fast wins are, they come from recommendation features. And just to kind of like, um, like explain that a little bit. So like, imagine that you published a video today on like how to tie a tie, right? In that particular case, you have to wait for people to search for how to tie a tie in order to go and interact with that video. Um, whereas if you make a video and it does well in the recommendation system, then YouTube is just showing it to people as they're coming onto the platform and they'll show it to people at scale as long as people are you know, enjoying the content. And because of that, 
like if you are targeting something for search, unless it's something that's like, you know, on fire in terms of trending, then in that particular case, like there's a really good chance that if it was only getting search traffic, which it won't, it'll still get it from everywhere else. But if it was only getting search traffic, there's a really good chance that, you know, when you wake up tomorrow, that there probably hasn't been 100,000 people looking for that particular term, right? Um, whereas when it comes to the recommendation features, if people really enjoy your content and it's something that people are just responding to at a really high competitive rate, then in that case, it's possible through the recommendation features to wake up with 10,000 or 100,000 views, you know, on a video. So because of that, just the difference in terms of, you know, recommendation features versus search is something that's always to be considered when it comes to, you know, putting your content, you know, together and thinking of where it is that you're trying to get traffic. But with that said, it's easier to get people to respond um, from search because they're literally looking for what it is that you've created compared to, you know, trying to capture somebody's attention off of a homepage or a mobile feed or something like that where they logged on to watch something else possibly, but then you're still trying to capture their attention and pull them into what it is that you're doing. So just keep all that in mind. Um, let's see here. So um, if you're just joining us, so we're rebooting everything right now um, because we had like a little bit of like glitchiness going on with the, um, with, you know, everything. So we're rebooting right now. So I'm on my phone at the moment, but we're going to be hopping back into, you know, everything else here um, in, in just, uh, just a second. So next up on our list here, we have um, Gabriel Demood, I think is how you say that. Um, Gabriel's been on YouTube for one year or more, and they do a DIY slash renovation channel. And the goal of the channel is to be full-time on YouTube. And the question is, my video can take, uh, can take longer to create and edit. How can I be more consistent and still provide a better quality for my audience? Working the process of creating content into your lifestyle is the best thing that you can do to solve that problem. So what I mean by that is, you know, over the course of the week, we all have the same amount of, you know, hours that we start with. Some of that, you know, will go to work. Some of it will go to leisure. Some of it will go to hanging out with, you know, people that we interact with. And um, with all of that, you know, you have a certain amount of time, you know, left. So every single day, looking for those pockets of time to where you can say, well, I could watch Netflix right now, or I could work on this video that I'm trying to get out. Um, and you start looking for little places in your schedule throughout the week that you can say like, okay, at this period in time, I'm going to do some topic research, um, you know, on Monday. On Tuesday, maybe I'm going to start, you know, putting together some bullet points or scripting, you know, some of the ideas that I came up with, you know, when I was doing the research on Monday. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to, um, you know, just kind of glance over my scripts and bullet points and all that again, just to confirm that I'm making those videos. Maybe um, while I'm doing that um, and, you know, the scripting and the research side, I'm also thinking about what I'm going to do with my thumbnails and titles and all that. Um, and then let's say I make the videos on Wednesday, I spend, you know, the time on Thursday and Friday editing, and then I publish on Saturdays, right? So just kind of working it into like those pockets of time over the course of the week um, will ensure that you're going to be able to do it sustainably for a long period of time. Um, and it ensures that it will also continually get done at the pace that you, uh, that you want to do it. We're good? Yeah. All right. So we're, we're coming back in on the other one. All right. Coming back in. All right. I'm going to mute this. I'm just going to set this down in case we have that problem again. Okay. And I'm taking this and we should be good now. Hopefully we don't get any like weird feedback or anything like that coming from my phone. I've got my laptop. I'm going to mute that one as well. You know, what's funny, dude. I just went through all that and I could have just came out on my laptop. Duh. Yeah. I got my laptop like right here. Look way to go. Yeah. I, I'm like sitting there and I'm like doing all this stuff on my phone and way all that, go, but I could just way came out on my laptop. That's great. Anyway. Okay. So no idea uh, what happened. Huh? No idea what happened. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? So uh, next up, okay, we did Gabriel here. So we are on number 24 right now. And the question here is from John Drummond Photo. Um, John uploads when they have time. They've been on YouTube for one year or more. Um, the type of channel is nature photography, landscapes, and wildlife. And the goal of the channel is to show my journey through uh, towards proficiency in nature photography showcase my work, demonstrate my techniques and have fun. Um, the question is, I have almost uh, 1100 subscribers and many positive comments, almost no dislikes, but I'm far from enough views, uh, view hours for monetization. I get decent impressions and click rate, but apparently few returning new viewers, not repeat views. I don't think YouTube pushes my content to the right audience that's interested in the art or photography rather than gear. Wait, I don't think YouTube pushes my content to the right audience that's interested in the art of photography rather than gear talk. How do I fix this? 
So in order to get YouTube to recommend your content to the right people, you have to make sure that you're making content about the right things. So there's a few different like things that you can do here. So first is to make sure that every time you come up with a video idea that you're thinking to yourself, um, if I'm trying to get people that are interested in the art of photography to interact with this content, then in that particular case, I need to make something that is topically about the art of photography. So those people will start interacting with the content, right? So if you are, you know, like, hey, here's my camera, but you're trying to reach people that are into the art of photography, then in that case, you're still talking about gear. So since you're still talking about gear, some of those people are still going to come in, right? Um, but when it comes to YouTube pushing your content to the right audience, they're pulling, you know, in terms of how the system works, just kind of getting into semantics there. But basically, when you publish your videos, it basically pulls to the viewers. The viewers are, are you know, the priority there. So when you publish your content, the system's like, hey, who is on the platform right now? That would be a great fit for this. Let's, you know, kind of pull it, you know, in their direction so that, uh, uh, you know, we can see, you know, how these people respond to it. But there's other things that you can do as well. So like, for example, um, in your particular case, you could add things like for photographers to your videos and add the words, you know, photographer or photographers into like some of your titles. And by doing that, you're going to help the right people click on your content. So for example, like, um, um, like if it was like, you know, 10, 10 things, all nature photographers, you know, need to, uh, you know, keep in mind or, you know, 10 mistakes, all nature photographers make, or, you know, things like that then what you do in that particular case is you make it to where the people are going to see that title and they're going to be like, hey, this is for me or this isn't for me. So then in that particular case, the only people that, I mean, there would definitely be some stragglers, but the main people that would be clicking on that video would be people that would identify as like, you know, the nature photographers um, or photographers. So because of that, those would be the right people clicking on your content. So I call that an audience identifier that you add to your title. That's just a fancy way of saying I'm making it crystal clear who this content is for right so same exact thing goes like if you're trying to reach if you're trying to reach like uh moms right then in that particular case if uh let's say that you are like you know hey here's um you know six just to have fun here six plumbing hacks for moms right then in that what? particular case <laughs> that's why i said for having fun here so so if it's like you know six plumbing hacks for moms then in that particular case that's a it would great be video it would be mom, fact, yeah no, we need to tell great, roger right no that's a great video actually of uh, the plumbing hacks for moms yeah yeah it is but but um but basically the idea is like when you add that four moms or four entrepreneurs or like in my case i add you know youtuber and youtubers and new youtubers to a lot of the titles that i have or i'll add things to my titles that youtubers connect with like views subscribers you know things like that that stand out to you right so when you're trying to reach a certain type of viewer when you can call them out that way then it helps ensure that there's more of the right people clicking on your content now in some cases, this might seem counterintuitive because you might think, well, if I do that, then it's going to, it might be a smaller amount of people that are clicking on these videos, which is, which could be true, but it would be true for a temporary amount of time because that would help the system understand these are the people interested in these topics that are clicking on this. Therefore, if they're enjoying it, Let's show it to more people that are also watching other content like this, right? So it's just a way to, you know, kind of tap directly into the people that you're trying to reach with your content. So, um, so I would consider, you know, trying to think of how you could work that approach into what it is that you're doing for your uh, nature photography. Crowd. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, hearing. I'm six, hearing six plumbing hacks for people who lose YouTube play buttons. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, this is gonna be a theme now. Oh, just saying. Just man. saying. Yeah, it's gonna that's be a, a very yeah. small this, this niche hurts. of people yeah. for just it would get one view and that view would be you. Oh, uh, just me <laughs> sitting there like this. <laughs> right. Just going. Just one view. Yeah, I, don't right? know, I don't know where it's at. Yeah. Six plumbing. Yeah. For, yeah. One, one person would watch that uh, video. Hurts. OK, so. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we've got uh, Mr. Elmore's Music Lab. Um, they do daily content. They do music edutainment content. The goal of the channel is the gift uh, to give the gift of music, uh, whether you want to create it or just appreciate it. Um, the question is, I just passed the 1,000 mark in three months. Congratulations to you um, for crossing that 1,000. <laughs> golf claps all around. And golf claps all around. Yep. And the uh, longest form um, did the best yet. I converted 14 plus subscribers from 200 views. Is there a range or percentage of subs to views that should be your target? I do improve with every video I make and they keep performing better and better. Um, thanks for all your help. I'm going for 10,000 my first year. Keep on grinding everyone. Um, only you can stop you. 
Ah, so great. Great message there at the end. Love that. Only you can stop you. So when it comes to your subscriber conversion, things like that, it's going to be different per video. It's going to be different, you know, per content creator. It's going to be different, you know, per channel, all of that stuff. So <laughs> what you want to do in your particular case is, is, you know, people are responding to what it is that you're doing, which is great. And just, you know, trying yeah. to, you know, maintain that. But more importantly, trying to think about like, why do I think they're subscribing to this content? Um, you know, maybe compared to my other videos or why, like, what, what do I think it is that's triggering the people that are subscribing? to this video what i think it is that's actually triggering them to you know subscribe to this what type of value do i think they're getting out of this that you know garners that subscribe it could just be you're asking or the way that you're asking or it could be that they're doing it naturally um so you know nice work to you on that but in terms of let's see here oh yeah but in terms of like an absolute number um no um, just because, you know, it's, it's individual per, you know, per channel, just based on, you know, all the different nuances of, you know, every different creator and channels and videos and all that stuff. Hear me out. All right, let's hear it. Only you can stop you unless somebody else loses your play button. Yeah, and then good. in that that's case, good. it's somebody else's somebody fault. Somebody else's fault. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's very few times in yeah. life where you can actually blame somebody else for real. Yeah. Like getting sideswiped in a car yeah. where you're, you know, that's, true. that's somebody else's yeah. fault. Yeah. You know, the bank collapses. That's yeah. somebody else's yeah, fault. That's true. Losing a play button. That's yeah. somebody else's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Very few times in life you can actually do that. That That's would be true. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, great message there in terms of like only you can stop you, you know, and like, you know, in, in those, you know, in that same thing, like it's always good to remember that there's no like, you know, boards with a score on it anywhere. There's no like, you know, walls, you know, you make those for yourself. There's no ceilings, you know, none of that. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Motive Music Studios says three tips for not losing your level of your organizational <laughs> skills. One view. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If if it's not there, if it's not at my place, um, I think that it just ended up like accidentally getting thrown away. Um, just with like, I, I, I <laughs> that's do. Even worse. I know it is. <laughs> but I'm saying that's the only thing that makes sense. That so means if it's not there, then either like a box wasn't taken or it was thrown away. Which means that it was just in a pile somewhere of stuff. That and, means, and, and it was there's it was some garbage collector in Thailand. It's so, like so, holy cow! Yeah. yeah. So those, <laughs> huh, <laughs> Dean, I never heard of them. So for those of you who have never <laughs> been to like Southeast Asia, we have our own system of recycling here. We're like, people will go through the garbage. People yeah. will go through garbage at different stages and take you know some people just add that. more butter i do not like that idea at all take they'll take plastic <laughs> they'll take these different things so somebody may have went through his garbage if he threw it away and took that play button you know what i should hit all the pawn stores here that play button could be sitting in a pawn shop could be that would be hilarious can you imagine yeah, yeah i should probably be the one doing that yeah can you yeah. imagine I gotta, I gotta look through uh the place more though just to make sure but anyway so uh uh yeah, urban van life says uh neil says uh hang on uh hang on at play buttons one thing got the lost in mexico for two years super Boom. chat yep lost the and display button yeah like both <laughs> goodness 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 okay so um renovation and restoration um says they've been on youtube for a year or more um the type of channels renovating and building work um, hold on, building work in time lapse. Oh, that's cool. Um, they say they want to show their work, but also how you do the work so people have confidence to do their own work. You know what's funny? So over here, um, where where we live, like they build everything out of concrete. So like you know where we grew up in the states, everything's built out of wood. So if you want to hang something, you just find a stud, drill a hole in the wall, like it's done. Um, here, I'm intimidated by like drilling a hole in the concrete because it's such like a final thing. Have so, you drilled like, a I'm, hole into a tile yet? No. No, I'm not even like, yeah, I can't even get it in the concrete. Like, I'm not even like, you know, strong enough to get it into, uh, courageous enough to get it to, to, to go into concrete. So I'm definitely not going after tile. It's really easy to break tile. No, I can imagine. Yeah. So don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not, in, yeah. I'm not like, yeah. I'm, I'm worried about breaking the whole wall. Yeah, you might. <laughs> so, so I'm definitely not going to go after tile. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like I've got like all these cool adapters and things like that where I can put like lights up on a wall and just connect it there. But, um, but I'm just afraid of breaking my entire wall and causing like cracks, you know, to go across the whole wall and everything. So, uh, so yeah so I could use your channel probably. But anyway, um, the question is, I post videos, um, look at competitors. I post videos, look at competitors, and they are similar. They get massive views, and I get a few, and they look similar. How do they get massive views? So they might look similar, but they're not similar in how people are responding to them. Um, other things that other things that can happen as well. So, you know, like with your channel, I'm not sure how many videos you have, or, you know, like how you're optimizing things, or, you know, how people are responding to your content at all. I'm not familiar with that with your channel. Um, but when it comes to the other channel, if they are, you know, getting massive amounts of views, they, I'm going to guess that it's probably a sizable 
that's probably a sizable channel as well. So if it's a sizable channel, then you know YouTube probably has a lot of data on that channel in terms of who to show the content to um, as well. And if it's a sizable channel, they also have that built-in subscriber base that YouTube you know can show that content to when they publish a video, and those people will come in and quickly teach YouTube um, you know who the right people are to show that content to based on the data that it's collecting when those people are coming in. And from there, um, you know it's long term you might end up winning you know with your videos, but in terms of that you know immediate publish you know. They, they might still have it. But another thing to consider is if they are getting massive amounts of views, the only reason or the only way that can happen is if people have a very high response to that videos in terms of YouTube can detect that people are highly satisfied when they're enjoying that content. That's the only way outside of somebody running ads or outside of, you know, like external, you know, something huge external like Reddit or something like that linking into, you know, a particular video on platform. The only way um, that a video can just get crushed with views like that is if it's a piece of content that people find highly satisfying. That's it. So if they're clicking on it a lot and then once they enjoy it, they find it highly satisfying. Maybe they're watching more content on the channel. They're subscribing to it a lot, things like that. Then of course, you know, YouTube's going to continue to show that video to people as long as they continue responding to it. If they don't respond to it well, then the system will pull it back and you know, it won't get as many views on it. So one thing that's really important to remember, and this is for all of us, we all have to remember this. So, you know, as a content creator, we are biased to what it is that we make. So everything that we do, we are we are doing it based on our understanding of what we think is good. So everything is catered to our tastes. Everything is catered to how we think things should be. In some cases, that aligns with the people that we're trying to reach. In other cases, it doesn't. So because of that, when you're looking at another channel, it might look like you're doing the same things, but you might not be doing those same things, right? Like for example, the way that that person communicates could be the difference between how people are responding to that compared to how people are responding to yours. The way they start their videos could be the difference to where they might be holding people when the video first starts where you might be losing a lot of people. Um, what they do at the end of their videos, once people get to the end, um, you know, like one of the things that we're always talking about is like when you get to the end of your video, make sure that you're not using any finalizing language to let people know the video is over, try to get them to watch another video, hopefully into a playlist. And the reason for that is because if people are really enjoying one video and then they watch, you know, multiple videos, that's also a great sign to YouTube that people are really enjoying that content. So that also increases them getting recommended additional content when it gets published as well. So like there's all of these other factors involved and it's really easy for us to take our own bias based on our choices and our preferences and think that it's, you know, as good as, or that it's better than other, you know, videos. But in reality, the audience actually decides like the viewers of YouTube decide like whose content is better, which video on your channel is better. Like the, the audience is what actually decides that. So, um, so because of that, anytime, Time you're like in that thing of you know comparing yourself with another channel so remember it's up to the viewers and their taste because one of the things that you'll see a lot in like youtube communities and like reddit facebook discord and stuff is you'll see that people will be like hey i'm making like these awesome videos but these people over here are making crappy videos and they're doing way better than mine you'll see that yeah. all over the place but in reality it's just the audience, right? The, the, like the, the world, essentially, when you're putting it out there, they are responding better, which means that your video might be better to you, right? Because you made it, but in terms of when you're making it for other people, they are the judge, jury, and executioner, you know, in that particular, you know, um, scenario. So Why just do you always have remember to that. execute them? I don't know. It just, it just, like just kind of, you know, went, yeah, it was like that third thing, right? I'm not I was watch like judge, jury, and executioner, and I think that, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not watching your videos yeah, anymore. That right. sounds like a setup. You got to see. You got some super chats. Super okay, so chats. Um, very first one, Coach Plays says, should you unlist old videos that are no longer in your niche, even if they are your most popular videos and bringing in revenue? So this is a very nuanced question. The reason it's a nuanced question is because I would I would like really need to take a look at your channel to be like, yeah, you should probably let that one go. But like if you like, here's some things to consider so that you can make this call. So if you're looking at old videos on your YouTube channel, the very first thing to think about is, okay, if the people that are interacting with my new content, would those people be likely to watch those those old videos based on the topics and you know the content that's bringing in people for that new content or the people that are coming in at scale on that old on the old content are they would they be likely or highly likely to watch the content you know this new content that I'm publishing and you can actually see this in data by looking at like return viewers and things like that um, but the idea is if you're like you know what this old content is about basketball and now I'm teaching people how to uh, how to how to how to knit right so in that particular case 
yeah, you probably want to get rid of the basketball content because you're moving in the direction of like trying to connect with people into knitting, not people that are into basketball, right? So, um, so, so just think of it that way because things that can happen is, and this is where like, you know, having a niche and all that does come into play is like when you are, when you have a piece of content on your channel and it's a primary traffic driver to your YouTube channel in terms of most of your subscribers come from that, most of your views come from that, then what's happening is you're growing an audience from that video that's unrelated to the content that you're actually publishing now or that you publish on a regular basis. You're growing an audience of people that are not interested in, in that new stuff. So because of that, every person that comes in and interacts with your content, if YouTube starts recommending some of your new stuff to them, they're not going to respond to it because it's not, you know, stuff that they're into. So because of that, it's, it's, you know, that stuff that you have to keep in mind when you're making those types of uh, decisions. It's just thinking like, okay, the people that are watching this, would they be likely to respond to this? Yes or no? If the answer is like 100% no, no way, completely not, then, you know, that's where you might want to consider like unlisting something. Renee makes a, a very good point. He says, sometimes people think quality means fancy production or editing or effects, but quality really just means how you make the audience feel. That can be the difference between similar seeming videos. Spot on, man. Boom. Yep. Yeah, it's the same thing. I spent so much time editing this video. I put the, I did all these things. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like if, if people don't respond to whatever it is that you make, doesn't matter what you're doing to the video. Yeah. Like you have to make something that people respond to. I I follow creators like sometimes that I'm not really into like their niche, just, but they're just like crazy entertaining. Yeah. Just crazy entertaining people. Yeah, you, you know, like... um. Well, yeah, I guess it would still be within the niche. So, like Mark Ribolay, for example, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but like he's the he's the guy. He does like the live looping course, stuff, man. Yeah, loop, loop, loop daddy. Yeah. So, like yeah. with uh, like with him, for example, like um, like when I started watching his stuff, like um, it would recommend me like other people that do you know that kind of stuff, but it was like they just don't have what he has in terms of like you know just his ability to put grooves together he's and stuff like that. He's got swagger. Yeah, he he's does. He's got Boy, swagger, he. man. Yeah. So uh, so there, I was you know like I would like not respond to that other stuff, but I'll respond to like anything that he puts out. Yeah. yeah, love it. Yeah, because of him, I got that loop station. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Modern day pilgrim. I'm glad you're enjoying the yep. music. Hope you're yep. doing well. So uh, let's see here. So next up on the list, um, we have 27. Um, so we've got uh, J uh, Jimmy Renz. Jimmy Renz uploads one time per week or more. They do van life content. Super cool. Um, mm -hmm. We got Neil Urban Explorer in here. Um, you see him under Urban Van Life. Um, he does van content as well. Um, so, uh, the goal of the channel is to share what it's like to live as an expat and van life in Korea. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I'm actually going to open up your channel, a new, new tab. Cause I want to check that out. That sounds like super interesting. I don't know what it is with Korea. So really quick. So, um, I Korea was is a country. Well, yeah, yeah I know the North and South country, but like, uh, I, <laughs> South and South. I mean, you know, but. Just facts, yeah. right? Facts. Facts. So, uh, but Korea's coming up a lot over this last week. It's weird how things like that happen. So um, I was on Your Instagram. is in Korea. And I noticed how somebody that used to hang out here, they um, they got, I think they're at like 150,000 subscribers, maybe 200,000 subscribers. They have a play button, actually. And uh, But I, I saw their thing on Instagram. See that? And see I that? saw the thing on Instagram. Little dig right there. You see that? They've <laughs> but, got a play button. But but I saw the thing on Instagram. Is it my um, play and, button? And I, saw, I shot him a message. I was like, hey, dude, I just saw that, you know, that you, you know, reach this milestone. Congratulations, blah, blah. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, I live in Korea now. I've got an entertainment visa. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even know that was a thing. You know, but he's like, yeah, I got an entertainment visa. It allows me to be able to make content here, you know, all that stuff without any headaches, so on and so forth. And I was like, super cool. But we had our conversation. And then the next day, somebody hits me up on Twitter and they're like, hey, my YouTube channel's going great. I got like 30,000 subscribers. I'm full-time now. Um, I know you're an expat. I would love to talk to you a little bit about that and so on and so forth. Come to find out they're moving, they're wanting to move to Korea. And they're like, yeah, I don't know anything about like visas and stuff. So I'm like, dude, I just talked to this guy. He does this. And then now we have this person here. We got Jimmy, who's also in Korea doing like the van life thing in Korea. So I guess it's going, I guess it's like hopping in Korea then. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. I say yo. Right? Yeah. Well, what it? is that again? I say yes. Say, what is it? I don't know. Oh, okay. Come some me da. All right. So yeah. So yo. Jimmy, let's, let's answer Jimmy's question here. Okay. Right. So uh, da -da -da -da. what's the best editing app for mobile? I'm currently using uh, Kinemaster. So um, Kinemaster is okay. Um, Kinemaster is great. Yeah, it is. Uh, Kinemaster is good. Uh, Video Leap is good if you're on an iPhone. I think they have it for Android now as well. Um, CapCut, CapCut. Um, is solid. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for Cut. like an app, um, you know, like those those Here. three are probably the, the ones you want to use. Uh, if you're on an iPhone, which you're not, you're on a Samsung Note 10. Um, but uh, but LumaFusion is also a good like mobile um, editing app. 
Yeah, you know when it comes to apps on your phone, like they're all good these days. It just comes down to like, what do you need? Yeah. What do you need and what do you want? Because if a, a lot of the apps like Kinemaster is amazing, but it has a lot of features in there that you might not be using. So think about what it is that you need. Download them all. Take a look yeah, at them. Use the trials and then see which one makes the most sense to you based on how it's laid out and the features that you actually need. But like you said, CapCut, Video Leap, Kinemaster, LumaFusion on iPhone. Pet Connection International, um, they upload when they have time, been on YouTube for a year or more. They do pet care advice. The goal of the channel is to share evidence-based care information to improve the lives of pets around the world. Love the mission. Yep. Um, the question is, how to keep growing a channel when I have to stop posting as much? I'm not able to maintain my current upload schedules. It's causing constant chronic health flare-ups due to stress. I don't have the energy to make every video a massive effort. How can I keep my channel growing and improving while also scaling back to look after my health? So first, health is always, you know, priority. That's the most important. We got, oh, he's been living in Korea for six years. So um, health is always the most important, so you got to take care of that. Um, when it comes to uh, YouTube, s publish at the cadence that you are, you know, wanting to publish at. With your mission here of sharing evidence-based care information to improve the lives of pets in the world, every video that you put out, you're going to be adding that value. So if you put it out every week or every day or once a month, the people that are going to be watching those videos are still going to be able to get that value. So of course, if you're like, Hey, I'm trying to go like full time on YouTube. In that case, you know, there may be, you know, a little bit of, you know, you know, little periods of time where you got to kind of, you know, work through some things. But when it comes to, you know, what it is that you're currently doing, every video that you're putting out is value. So because of that, you know, if you need to scale back, then by all means, you know, scale back, you know, taking care of your mind and taking care of your, you know, body when it comes to dealing with all this stuff is definitely important. You have, you know, a certain amount of energy throughout the day. So, you know, if you need to, you know, kind of take breaks or, you know, instead of publishing weekly, if you need to go biweekly or something like that in order to manage that for this moment in time, then, you know, by all means, you know, do it. Like there's no rule that says that you have to publish any certain cadence or that you have to do anything. There's some people that will publish one video per month on YouTube and they do awesome. So, you know, because of that, just keep in mind that, you know, there's not a requirement to what it is that you do. It's just typically recommended that you do it more because that gives you just more opportunities to learn from the content that you're publishing so you can make better videos and so on gives you more videos in the system which increase increases your chances of videos doing well and things like that gives more content for your audience to watch you know once they do discover you and those sorts of things but you know again it's not a requirement to have any type of cadence so just give yourself a break and don't feel the guilt because you know that's probably going to be a part of it like i know i should be publishing videos um, but just try to just kind of absorb that guilt and say hey you know my my health is more important than that you know right Right now so i'm going to kind of scale back while i'm dealing with this and then you know once i get past this then you know if i want to scale back up then i will this is the most random thing ever but i was grabbing this cup and i grabbed it with two fingers and it just didn't feel complete so mm. then i put three fingers in it and i thought that's too much mm. so i'm wondering <laughs> this is like a random thing and i've never thought about this before but how many fingers do you put in a cup holder oh it's interesting like for uh like type it in the chat and let me know do you put are you like a one finger person a two finger person a three how i many... guess it would probably depend on on how big the handle was okay well it doesn't matter yeah but you you have a default like if, you're, if you have that like little teacup then you're right. probably rolling with like a finger let's just say you have a normal sized cup that could fit up to three fingers mm. let's say you have a comfortably cup. or you're Com squeezing them in comfortably i can okay. comfortably fit three fingers okay. in here okay. but let's say you have a, a cup that you could comfortably fit three fingers inside of it how many do you put in there to hold it mm. because two feels a little too little but three feels a little too much mm. i felt kind of awkward grabbing it with two fingers in and front making of the conscious choice of how many fingers am i going to use with this instead yeah. of and no. then I, and then i and then i thought if i put three in here people might notice that i have three in here i'm kind of like do you want you put like, three, why fingers you put three? like wow you're holding that coffee everybody kind of weird yeah, yeah don't you know everybody puts two yeah that's good yeah yeah so uh so yeah so let us know here in the uh chat if you how many fingers you typically totally random uh, but that's typically uh, use here so we got the haunting truth um saying they are a total uh two so we got two fingers there all right yeah neil says um how many fingers is too much d um we got life on youtube and twitter saying it's usually uh one one what yeah three fingers with the pinky sticking out okay now uh, we're getting specific so now we got three uh, fingers see? in and then you got this going on too see see if you that's got that okay I, I would I, oh you know what that's good for stability though because then you can like quickly like stabilize the cup if it starts to like wobble in any ooh, way look at this thumb on one side oh yeah pinky on the other huh. so you've revolution i'm a new man yeah <laughs> that's a good one yeah that's I will, good i will never drink normally out of a cup look at this yeah so we got glenn here side, so glenn front side glenn oop, hold on missed uh we got uh phase blaze does three this is so um, good 
hold on. What's Glenn say? Glenn says that they do two fingers J um, and then they hold their thumb on the top. So basically two fingers like this and then thumb on. Yep. Just like that. Like that. Yep. That's good too. Looks like it looks stable. You know what though? That's not as stable as this. I'll tell you that. Mm. I've, I've never had cup stability like mm. this before. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know that's kind of a weird. Yeah. That's just, you know, Hey, you know what? You guys are learning stuff. We're learning stuff. This is great. Yeah. Right? It's going both ways. This is yeah. fantastic. I mean, yeah. I guess you can use two hands. Modern Day Pilgrim says three little hands. <laughs> three little hands. So, okay. So, yeah. modern, modern Day Pilgrim's got three hands holding up the cup. Yeah, okay. So, we got that. So, uh, let's see here. Yeah. I, you know, I just wanted to make sure that when people were watching me drink out of a cup, they didn't think I was weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I would well, I mean, own, they probably think I would weird, own it. I, mean, yeah. I would own it. If like, D, you're kind of weird drinking out of that cup, I would totally own that. Relay Ritz says they do five. So it's like all in. All, yeah, it's, <laughs> all like, in. it's like fist. Yeah, whole fist on the uh, okay. whole fist on the cup there. All yeah, right, nice. There nice. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so um, right. next up. That's settled. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a good pattern interrupt there. I love that. Yeah. So um, uh, Dreth and the Blind Wolf says that they upload one time per week or more. Um, they have been on YouTube for a year or more. They, do, they have a gaming channel. Um, the goal of the channel is showing people with visual impairment can play uh, MMOs any class they want. And the question is, I make a lot of how-tos, um, um, for example, tank dps or making money in game uh, making money in game here's my question my videos are long anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes should i edit two videos into a shorter and long form so what you want to do for this to answer this question is you want to go and you want to look in your audience retention reports and see how long people are making it into your video if you have almost everybody gone by 10 minutes it doesn't make any sense to make a 30 minute video right if you have almost everybody gone by five minutes then it doesn't make uh, sense to make a, you know a 20 minute video so you know because of that go into your analytics look in your audience retention reports and see how far people typically get in your video and then make the call based on that um, and then if you you know need to then you know make the shorter videos and see how people respond to those and then you just kind of keep you know going at it so just a heads up you know when it comes to like learning you know how to do all this and how to make content for your audience and making calls like this on like how long videos need to be and all that like um first like the video should be as long as it needs to be right to you know to, to add the value that you want to, to add but um in addition to that you know youtube gives us uh what's called our analytics it's the stats behind our youtube channels for those of you that are new and what you can do is you can go and you can look in those analytics and you can see how people are responding to all different aspects of your YouTube channel and then you can use that information to kind of help you make calls like this so like in this particular case when you're like hey um, I'm making these long videos maybe I should make them shorter but I don't know what to do then in that case you go and you start looking through all your videos like okay hey my videos are 30 minutes this is how long you know how people are reacting to these and then from there you're like okay um, if everybody's gone if I literally have zero people at you know 20 minutes then in that particular case I need to start seeing where people are falling off and start you know trying to keep, make shorter videos to where I can get more people to the end of those and then as I start getting better at that as long as the content you know as long as it's necessary for the video then from there I would, you know, start expanding out if it was something that would be, you know, a good fit for my video. The Artist Haven, what's going on? Hope you're doing fantastic. Hey, Tish. How you doing? So uh, next up on our list here, we're on number 30. Man, this is great. Oh, yeah, today. flying. Yeah. So, uh, and great questions. Today. Yeah, really good today. Uh, Miss Bella you, Games. Usually when I'm not with you, the questions suck. But mm. when we're, we're together, these are great questions. Yeah, yeah they are. These yeah, are good. Good job, everybody. So, yeah, hey. Yeah, high five fist bumps all around. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, the type of channel here is a gaming channel. The goal of the channel is to grow the channel and entertain people by sharing games that I enjoy playing. And the question is, I care, I'm currently using DaVinci Resolve to edit and process my videos. Why I love the functionality of it and that it's free, it's very taxing on my Windows PC. Yeah, that seems to be the, a commonality, a uh, common yeah. problem with uh, DaVinci. What are good alternatives that can do video, audio editing that are preferably free or inexpensive? So when it comes to uh, video editing, um, you ha you can do uh, Camtasia. That's super easy mm. to use. Um, now with Camtasia, you can add LUTs to it. You can zoom in and out. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Um, but there are limitations in terms of, you know, like for example, you can get like presets and things like that for it, but it's just not at scale as, you know, some of the things. But in a lot of types of content, it's enough to, you know, do the job and make everything look good and, you know, have great videos. Um, so that's a one-time fee. Um, for Camtasia, but it's, you know, a great piece of software. It's really easy to use. Um, and it's not that hard on your computer. Um, there's also um, Adobe Premiere. Um, when it comes to Adobe Premiere, that one's kind of like where you're, it's, it's like DaVinci, where you're like taking the, uh, you're taking the limits off, right? So it's like, if there's anything that you want to do outside of like full 
full-blown animation, you can probably do it inside of Premiere. So um, so that one is really popular amongst YouTubers for that particular reason, for the people that are doing like filmmaking content or really putting together like most types of content, um, just because it's also something you can find a lot of information about. So if you're trying to find a very specific problem, like, you know, how do I, you know, ungroup an audio um, how do I ungroup my audio from my video, right? You could find that video or you can Google that and you'll be able to find a hundred different videos or more on exactly how to do that thing, right? So in terms of the support that you can get there, it's massive. Um, um, and all the things that you can plug into it is also massive, but that comes with a monthly subscription, which a lot of people are against. And that monthly subscription is what causes a lot of people to move from uh, uh, Premiere into DaVinci Resolve, you know, because DaVinci Resolve is free. So Cap, CapCut now you have on CapCut. Desktop. Yeah, you have CapCut, which on is on desktop, desktop now yeah. um, as well. And um, with CapCut, I've never used the desktop version, so I can't say one way or another. Um, have you used it? Uh, I have not used it. Okay. I downloaded so it. I haven't. You but haven't I, actually I, made a video with it yet? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's available, um, but we can't really like endorse it, you know, yet just because, you know, we haven't, you know, we haven't used, um, we haven't used that one yet. It's good on your phone. Yeah. I've used it on the phone. Yeah. It's great on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic on the phone. So um, let's see here. Next up, we've got Sam the Hammerman. Love the flow of that one. Sam the Hammerman. Sam Man. the Hammerman. Yep, Sam the Hammerman. So uh, let's see here. So we've got a gaming channel. They do Call of Duty stuff. The goal of the channel is to impact the Call of Duty culture. As some know, it can be extremely hateful and toxic. Cool that you're trying to, you know, kind of bring that to a more positive light. Love Isn't that. Isn't that weird it how is. some communities yeah. just breeds a toxic side of that community? It is. That's so bizarre. It is. You know, like... Sometime in the future, they're going to turn somebody. If they're not already, they're going to study gaming communities, YouTube community, social media communities yeah. to try to figure Reddit's out. Reddit's like that too. You go into some oh subreddits. God. Reddit's like the best and the worst place at the on same the time. At the same time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's like you'll yeah. go into some Reddits and it's like, wow, this place is amazing. And then you go into other subreddits, you're like, oh my god, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, yeah like I, I can't even like look at the posts yeah. in here. Like I'm not reading any comments in here. This yeah, is a disaster. It's so weird, yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But crazy. it's weird that gaming, gaming always like. I, I don't understand the, the the toxic nature of like man, you're playing it's a when video it's supposed game, to be fun. right? Right? Yeah, right. like it's supposed to be fun. Why are you getting all bent out of shape? Right. Yeah. It's like people like, hey, let's go ride a bike and be toxic about it. Right. Like a toxic bike rider. <laughs> right. Let's go right. smell flowers and just be horrible while we're doing it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Like, I don't understand gaming. <laughs> right. Hey, let's yeah. go get a foot massage and be toxic about it. Right. Right. It's just so weird. <laughs> do something you enjoy and like just you're hate playing, it. Yeah. Do something you enjoy and hate every minute of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. I don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, we need to start like a creator for good uh, movement, yeah. right? Where it's like, hey, just do just do it all for good. Like Dude. like in this particular case, because they're trying to have that like positive impact. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So um, the question here says, I post two videos and I do two live streams weekly, um, but have only been posting one short each week. I get quite a few subscribers from shorts, but worried that they will not turn into active viewers. First, never worry about that. Think about it, but don't ever like worry about it, right? Like do your thing. People, some people are going to be on board. Some people aren't. Um, for the people that aren't, there's nothing like there's, there's there. I mean, I guess technically there is stuff that you could do to kind of get them on board, but you know, like there's what, like, we're like 7 billion people now, 8 billion people in the world, whatever I think it is. We hit 8 Did billion, we hit eight? didn't we? Yeah. I'm not sure. So, so yeah, I know I'm it was gonna, getting I'm there. Let you know right now. Yeah. I'm but there's like tons of people. So, you know, because of that, like, you know, just know that you can't please everybody, you know, and all that. So don't think of it. Like I have to capture every single person, 8 just billion, 8 billion. Yep. So then, you know, just do your thing and then you're going to, you know, you're going to capture the people that are into it. And then the people that aren't, you know, it's not a big deal, but you say, but you're worried that they're not going to turn into active viewers. Some people will, some people won't. And What's interesting is some people will come and they'll watch a lot of your videos, but they won't actually interact. So, you know, they'll interact, they'll watch your stuff, but they won't like it. They won't, you know, comment, anything like that. They'll just watch it because they enjoy the videos. So you'll, you won't even know they exist outside of just seeing the, uh, the, the data, you know, that that's behind it. Um, but currently they're at 439 subscribers, 255 watch hours and really seeking to be monetized, be monetized. Would you recommend posting more shorts to gain the subscriber goal quickly or continue at my current pace? Um, so I would experiment with shorts. I mean, in my opinion, you know, shorts, even though, you know, it is getting more and more competitive by the day. Um, it's still a huge opportunity, you know, for content creators. <laughs> and the reason, especially for people that are getting started, like in your case where you're currently at 439 and 255 for your watch hours, like the reason that that it's a good thing for you is that like when it comes to trying to grab attention from like recommendations um, in any capacity, you also have to, in addition to making good videos, you also have to learn how to get people to click on what it is that you're doing and you have to make compelling titles and thumbnails and all that. And with short form content, 
it's just so much easier because then you can just focus on, you know, that really good clip. And then, you know, somebody, they just swipe up, bam, it happens to them and they enjoy it or they don't. And then they move on or, you know, they go and they explore more. So, you know, because of that, there's less involved to get that initial attention and it's not as competitive at this moment in time. So because of that, Definitely, um, you know, in my opinion, I think that you should consider trying YouTube shorts, not just for like, hey, I want to use it to hurry up and get subscribers, but as a content creator, you know, especially if you're just coming into this, you know, for those of us that have been making content for a long time, this like vertical, you know, video and all that stuff, it's like, you know, something that we've had to adjust to. But if you're coming in as a content creator um, and you're just getting started with all this, like vertical content and short form content, specifically in YouTube shorts, it's a part of the game now. So, you know, it is yeah. something that you should at least experiment with because as a content creator, like it's something that you will end up doing at one time, at one point or another, if it's on YouTube, if it's on TikTok, Instagram, whatever, as you get traction, like you're going to end up doing it. It's just figuring out like, if you're going to start doing it now so that you can really reap the benefits of, you know, possibly growing the channel faster that way, or are you going to do it later after you've already, you know, went through the process of, you know, learning all the skills of, you know, making the longer form content. What are you going to say? I get a lot of comments under the videos where I'm talking about YouTube shorts where people are telling me they absolutely hate shorts. I hate shorts. I'll never make shorts. And my comment is the same. They're, they're saying this on a short? No. So they're watching my videos on how. Oh, got it. Got yeah. It, got and it. I might talk. I thought they were doing it on your shorts. I was like, no, 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 that's no. ironic. No. Yeah. <laughs> I hate shorts. <laughs> no, they'll just, you know, like I, I have video. Well, it is kind of ironic. I have videos about why shorts aren't growing. Ah. They'll leave comments under that about how much they hate shorts. And then I'll, I'll comment back like, well, you know, you got to meet your audience where they are. I would say uh, even if you don't like shorts, test them because you might be surprised. Like, there could be a good percentage of your audience that that does. They do like to watch right. shorts. You might and be missing you, out on a lot. And it gives you an easy way to also publish content on other platforms without having to do anything extra outside of. Yeah. I have this video on my phone Test while it. I'm using the bathroom. I'm going to upload this to TikTok. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, the argument can be said about short form content in general about attention spans and it's a race to the bottom. Yeah. There's no no argument there. But this this these aren't going away. Right. You know, I mean, I see comments, too. I can't wait till they quit shorts. because This is going to fail. It's how many yeah. newsflash it, newsflash. It's not yeah. feeling. What was it? We were talking the other day. Was there something like eight? God, man, we were talking about was like an 80% increase in short uploads. Is that what it was? Uh, I believe so. In, in the what in the past? I think it was the year. The past year, there's yeah. been an 80%. Yeah, they're up to like 50 billion. I, I if um, I think the number is 50 billion views a day or 50 something billion crazy. billion views a day for sure. Yeah, yeah that's it's either not a day or a month. I think it's a day. That's yeah, not crazy. going away, right? They're right. not getting rid of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's here to stay, and uh, and you know it's something that can get you in front of new people that yeah. haven't experienced your content before. Yeah. And YouTube, even though uh, the language used was that they have a bridge or a lane open on the bridge, but you know they're you know it's in YouTube's best interest to connect short viewers uh, to you know long form content as well. So you know they're working on you know on on making those connections on the back end. So because of that, you know because it is something that is here to stay. It's something that, you know, everybody should consider with what it is that you're doing, because if you're not using it at all, then, you know, one, you're missing out on an opportunity to where, you know, yeah. you might publish a short and that could be the game changer for your channel. Yeah, like, um, and you might be like, hey, you know what? I'm going all in on shorts. I'm not even going to make long form content anymore. I'm yeah. going to do shorts like, you yeah. know, that happens to people. So, um, so because be of that swimming against the current on that one, like you yeah. might be like, oh, long form content. I'm right. not growing. This sucks. Right. I want to quit. Where's my motivation? Right. Upload shorts, shorts and bam. it's like, boom. Right. Right. Like it's <laughs> it something happens. right that happens. Without question, it's something that you should definitely experiment with because um, so so Miss Bella Game says I don't watch shorts because they're not interesting to me, but I know some people like them. So here's the thing, like when it comes to uh, when it comes to like YouTube shorts, even if you don't like them currently, if they showed you the right shorts then you probably would because the idea that you don't like, I mean, I can't, I'm not, you know, speaking on your behalf. I'm just thinking like in general, you know, like, like if, if I didn't like shorts, but then YouTube showed me a piece of content that was compelling, I would still watch it. Right. So conceptually, I don't have to like shorts, but if I saw something in like my mobile feed and it was a short and the title grabbed me and I was like, Oh, this looks interesting for a second. Um, this, this, this techno song about Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. I'm going to, Oh, this is interesting. What's this? And then I watch that. Oh, that's funny. Let me just swipe up real quick just for the, cause I'm in here. And then, you know, next thing you know, you've watched 30 of them. 
So this is really important. So the the goth farmer, I made a comment earlier. She said something about 87% of her subscribers come from YouTube shorts. Mm, but nice. then she also says this, is which, and I think this is so important. And this is why I've sent so many people over to TikTok and into YouTube shorts. She says, shorts are giving me that small dose of dopamine yep. to keep going. So one of the top things I tell people, anytime you're like, I'm losing motivation or I'm, I'm not getting any views or whatever, you know what? Start uploading to shorts. Start putting it on TikTok. Yep. Put it on any, go to any short form platform. Go to, what, what's the one, Jay? Uh, go to Clapper. Clapper. Yeah, go to Clapper. Like, go um, Clapper. Like, yeah, make your, make your shorts for YouTube, you know, so that you can, you know, support your YouTube channel. And then take that same exact short, upload it to Clapper, upload it to Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, yeah. and TikTok. Yeah. And just watch what happens because they all have different algorithms. They yes. all treat you know things differently. So just watch what happens. Sometimes you'll have something blow up on YouTube, but it won't blow up anywhere else. Sometimes you'll have something blow up everywhere. Sometimes you'll have something do well on TikTok, but it won't do well anywhere else. Sometimes it'll do well on Clapper, but nowhere else. So like, uh, yeah, Be like because I think yeah. that's important. Like it, that that dopamine hit, like that's what keeps you going. Right. It's like, hey, it's working. Yeah, it's working. My yeah. efforts are paying off. Yeah, because that's what everyone totally. hates. Everyone yeah. hates. I hate it. You hate it. Totally. We put Every, in yeah. all of this work all day. Even yep. if it's, whatever it is, I put all this work into this thing, and nobody responded to it. Yep. But with short form video on the various platforms, if you upload to the, all those platforms, you will find one where people are responding, and then it starts to feel good. And when it starts to feel good, it excites you, and you make more. Yeah. And I think that is so important. So thank you for making that comment. I yeah. think that's super important. It is. Yeah. Yeah, so um, how we got here, uh, Genealogy says, um, I like watching shorts for music or entertainment, but my shorts generally don't do as well as my VOD horizontal content, but I'm still trying to figure out what works in shorts. Man, put them, good. Put them on other platforms. Just yeah, like yeah try about. that also. Put yeah. them on other platforms. Yeah, so with Clapper, by the way, I'm not like endorsing Clapper in any way, shape, or form. It's just an app like a friend recommended to me. And like when I when I post videos there, it's interesting because some of them, like I got a thousand followers there in like a day. And then, right. um, and then after that, you know, like when I publish a video, sometimes I'll get, you know, like a thousand views in like an hour. Sometimes, you know, like and the entire good. thing will get like a hundred views, like forever. And that's it. So yeah. it's hit and miss, but you know, but it's, you know, it's definitely like easy, uh, you know, easy dopamine if, you, yeah. if you're seeking some. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, and here's something else too. Like you need if, your fix, head no, over here. But, but yeah. there's truth in that. It, there is. Right. Yeah. There's all of this is gamified. You know, we, we've got our likes, we've got our subscribes, like, like that stuff, you know, we've got our, our analytics, like the feel good stuff yeah like if you can find out which one of these platforms your content will do well on and you're starting to build an audience on those platforms then that that's where you can start testing stuff like maybe your stuff isn't working for shorts because it's not put together right for shorts but right. maybe you can fine-tune that on another platform because now you've got an audience and now you can test something to fine-tune it versus you can't test something when, no, when nobody's watching it right right so maybe you can perfect it on another platform come back to shorts and maybe do well over there yeah, so take that as just kind of food for thought when it yeah. comes to uh, when it comes to uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Elmore's Music Lab says Easy Dopamine. I claim that music name <laughs> or that band name. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Renee, it's like it feels like chaos theory. Every video on every platform is its yeah. own unique Plinko style strange attraction. Spot on, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, uh, what is your channel name? We got kids learning and growing. Um, they upload one time per week or more, been on YouTube for less than six months. They make uh, content for kids slash toys and learning. Um, it's a hobby. They are just having fun right now and grateful for any money that comes in. The question is, do you think shorts will ever make more money than they do now? Absolutely, they will over time. Um, I followed your advice and started shorts a month ago. They brought me 11,000 subscribers. Wow. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so basically right here, what we were just talking about, like the timing of this is great. Right. Um, but yeah, this channel um, is just for reference here is kids learning and growing. So they tried shorts um, a month ago. And so far, it's brought them 11,000 subscribers. And one has gone viral wow. with 4 million views. Wow. And says, I hope they earn more money in the future is the rest of this comment. So when it comes to, you know, what we were just talking about, uh, oh, they're right here. Uh, they're like, woohoo. So like when it comes to, uh, you know, what we were just talking about, this is a great example of, you know, that that whole concept that we just went through um, in action. Yes, fantastic. Love timing it. on that was uh, was great. Yeah. So yeah, so there wasn't a, uh, a question here, I don't think. Oh yeah, it was, it was about, um, about shorts making more. Yeah, so like right now, <coughs> Excuse me. So right now, right. when it comes to uh, YouTube Shorts, keep in mind that like advertisers, things like that, like it's still kind of like a new thing. So you know, I'm sure that you know ad budgets and you know things like that that 
you know, some people are probably just dabbling in it compared to like going in on it, you know, cause you got to figure out like when it comes to that sort of thing, you have to like advertise, you know, wherever it is. And you got to figure out like the conversions that you're getting from, you know, your ad spend and all that. So, you know, some people are still in that experimental process, but like as people kind of fine tune that process, then advertising will get more intense on YouTube shorts, just like it is in long form. And um, because of that, you know, you'll win. Um, in addition uh, to that, um, we also get uh, premium views in YouTube shorts uh, as well. So, you know, you got to consider that um, all also. But yeah, in terms of like, you know, in the future, I think it'll make more money. I absolutely do. Um, I, I wouldn't compare it directly, though, to like long form because, you know, long form, it's a different experience, different type of viewer, you know, those types of things. Um, so I so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't compare it to long form, but I, I do predict that it will end up, you know, they, they you will end up be able, being able to make more money off of shorts in the future. Yep. So uh, let's see here. Next up on our list, uh, number 33, cruising here, trucking, I guess is the words we're looking for. Um, so they do Guess What Corgi, and uh, the it's a pet channel. The goal is to become monetized. And the question is, is it possible to monetize a channel on shorts alone? Yes, it is. Um, you have to get 10 million views in a 90-day period um, to, uh, to monetize shorts, and you have to have 1,000 subscribers from that 10 million views. That's just for YouTube monetization. For YouTube, yes. Right, you can find other ways to monetize your content. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, let's see, especially doing like pet stuff. Yeah, you, yeah, signing up for like an affiliate program somewhere. Man, I just closed my uh, window here. Signing, oh, it's, it, it brought it back. So signing up for like an affiliate program somewhere, you know, and, and promoting things, you know, to your audience is definitely something that, you know, that can bring you money um, as well. I, I haven't seen this on YouTube only because I'm not watching that sort of content on YouTube. But on TikTok, it's really popular for people to do like best finds on Amazon. Mm. So they'll find like, you know, two or three really cool items on Amazon and they'll make TikTok videos about them and they'll put links in their profiles that go out to the things that they're selling. And uh, people are making money on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they're doing it on YouTube as well. I just haven't seen it. Yeah. I like these streams too. Uh, one in mobile gaming. Yeah. One in mobile gaming says, holy crap, I miss you guys hey. being together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah these are great. Love these. You know, it'd be better. I know. I know. Yeah, what? if we had a, a barista in here, that'd be better. A barista would be good. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Believe it or not, at one time we talked about... We, we were in discussion, like serious we, discussion about having a barista corner. Yeah, so yeah. We, we have an area over here, and it's like sitting over here right now is like my Stormtrooper costume, well, Stormtrooper costume, Mandalorian costume, all this stuff is like right here. We considered last, before the world shut down, we thought about putting a barista there mm -hmm. and like putting a camera on the barista. So we barista have like, cam. Barista cam. So we can like, hey, we need a you know, shot or whatever. Put it on there, breeze the cam. Yep. Didn't, didn't make it happen. Yeah, not yet. I mean, who knows how, you know, who knows what the future holds. That's right. So uh, Brandon McBurney is our next question here. Uh, they do automotive content. The goal of the channel is to make money doing something that I'm passionate about. And the question is, love the channel, Nick. I've been researching starting a channel about sports cars. Um, think Ford, not Ferrari. Um, the topics I'd like to cover um, for long form content are 80% new car reviews, 10% classics and remodels at car shows. 5% customized late model cars and 5% new sports car breaking news and accessory reviews. Dedicated and repurposed long form content for shorts. My question is, do you think my strategy is too diverse for a brand new channel? Um, I don't actually. So when it comes to new uh, car reviews, um, of course, you know, that's going to get you in front of people that are looking for new cars. So I would definitely just consider that. They might not necessarily be car enthusiasts. So because of that, when it comes, like you always hear us talking about, you know, your target audience, making sure that you're making content for like a certain type of person. So the one thing about new uh, car reviews is even though it's more general audience content, those, which is fine, um, but those people might not be a great fit for the classics and the, um, the restorations, the car shows, the customized late model cars, you know, those types of things. Um, they might just be looking for reviews based on like, Hey, I'm going to get this new car or I'm considering it. So I'm going to go watch a bunch of reviews on YouTube before I make the decision. Right? So that's a different type of person than somebody that's like a car enthusiast. So because of that, I would just kind of I would work on that part a little bit for the sake of just making sure that you're getting in front of the right people because what you might have there is you might have somebody that ends up um, you know, subscribing to the YouTube channel because they got value out of your review or maybe a review of like a couple of cars that they're considering. But then after that, once they purchase their car, then the rest of your content might not have any relevance to them. So then that might hurt um, you know, your returning viewers in that particular case. So just some food for thought there on you know, just kind of fine tuning that just a tad and thinking about, you know, are you going after after car enthusiasts or are you just trying to help people make good purchase decisions on you know their cars because they would be you know two different audiences and in addition to that 
you know, trying to get them back into the channel um, is going to be, you know, more of a challenge with the new car crowd compared to, you know, if you're reaching car enthusiasts that would just love to see any, you know, great content that you put out about cars. Channel member. Welcome to One the and Mobile Gaming. Welcome to the uh, Niminati. Make sure when you get the chance, you go to NiminVIP.com. That's going to redirect you to Members Amp, which is the service that I use to manage my channel memberships. Um, get connected over there. Once you do, um, you're going to see a link to the, uh, like you're going to get some stuff like as soon as you like connect over there. Um, but once you um, are in there, one of the options is the Facebook group. So if you're interested in that, make sure you connect there and then go and um, uh, submit to join the Facebook group. When you do that, um, or if you can do that before the stream um, is over, then once the stream is complete today, then I'll go ahead and get you um, into the into the um, into the group over there. Um, let's see here. So next up on the list here, we've got who's up? Uh, Motif Music Studios. All right. They upload every other day. They've been on YouTube for a year or more. Um, they type of channels. They introduce modern composers and their piano music. Oh, that's cool. Um, the goal of the channel is to help music teachers find inspiring piano music by modern composers. And the question is, I feature specific piano pieces by contemporary composers, but the pieces aren't as common. Should I use the title or a more intriguing title instead? Oh, should you use the song title or more intriguing title? More so, intriguing. yeah, I would go for more intriguing yeah. there. Yeah. Because if you're trying to um, introduce modern composers to piano teachers, hold on, help music teachers find inspiring piano music by modern composers. Okay, so if you're trying to help music teachers find the music from modern composers, then all you need is for music teachers to be clicking on your content. So in that particular case, it's like, oh, you know, this, this, uh, you know, composer, um, you know, like, uh, you know, title wise, something along the lines of, you know, this, you know, you could technically do it, this version of X by X, you blew me away, something like that. Um, or you could be like, uh, I would actually go after short form with some of this yeah, also. I would too. Because that it'll just be easier to kind of grab attention for the actual content, but it might not necessarily put you in front of the right people, or it may. Um, so I would actually go like multi-platform on that particular one just to ensure that you're getting in front of the right people. But for the longer form content, just trying to come up with some type of compelling title in terms of like how you were, you know, shocked by how, you know, like their skill level or how fast. I don't know the nuance in terms of the language of, you know, somebody that would be talking about a piano player. But if it's something like, you know, the, you know, this chord progression, you know, is, you know, was life changing or, you know, however you wanted to package that, then in that particular case, you would be speaking their language. Of course, the imagery that you would in the title, um, you would be speaking their language there by doing that. And then for the thumbnail itself, then in that particular case, you know, using some type of piano imagery to help them identify instantly that it has something to do with piano um, would be the approach that I would take for that. Yes. But I would definitely do that instead of the song. Um, but experiment, though. So, you know, you might find, like, that's my recommendation. But, you know, you might find that they do respond to the song titles as well. So just kind of mixing it up between the two. But if you do the song title, I would make sure that you are putting something compelling there about how, you know, that particular composer, like, crushed it versus just having the song title itself. Because if you have the song title itself, then in that case, you know, it might get presented to people that are just listening to the music. And they're not necessarily the people that you're trying to reach because you're trying to reach the music teachers. I'm going to look for something here really quick. Um, Who's up next? Okay. Um, so next up on our list here, we've got number 38. We got Buff Bass or Buff Bass. We're going to find out here in a second. Fishing, Buff Bass. So the... Um, buff the, Bass would be great. Yeah, it would. would right? Actually, yeah. Buff base. Buff base. Uh, the goal of the channel is to turn passion into a career. And the question is, if you do not love your channel name, what are your thoughts on changing it and rebranding it? I would keep the channel name. I, I love your channel. Buff I think base it's great. Buff cool, Bass is great. Or Buff Bass. Buff yeah, Bass. Buff Bass is great. Yeah, yeah but um, yeah, you can absolutely change your channel name um, at any time if you want. You can rebrand at any time. I'm actually going to pull up your channel here really quick and just kind of see where you're at um, in your process. Yeah, you got like 5,000 subscribers on your channel. Like, yeah, you could change your name. Um, there might, you know, there might be, you know, a decent amount of people actually looking for you. So, you know, because of that, I would definitely make sure that you have like in, on your About Me page that, you know, that the channel is formally, you know, Bus Bass, you know, something like that, or Buff uh, Bass. I keep wanting to say Bass. Um, but, you know, having that in your About Me page, maybe putting it in some of your, you know, uh, like the, if you rebrand, putting it in the descriptions also of some of your videos, like formally, you know, that, so that, you know, you just have that connection of people, you know, are looking for you uh, specifically. 
So on that note, um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out. So look, here, here's, here's something that I want to bring to your attention. So you may or may not have noticed that um, Linus Tech Tips got, um, got hacked uh, over the weekend. If you're not familiar with Linus Tech, Ticks, tech, tech Tips, Huge. Linus Tech Ticks. That's yeah, a huge, whole new huge whole YouTube new channel, huge YouTube network. Actually, they have like multiple channels. Three of them actually got hacked. And um, the problem that they dealt with is a really common problem um, right now on YouTube. And because of that, you know, a lot of you know Daniel Batal. Um, he actually has um, people that are like one of the person. One of the people is a security, cybersecurity expert. Um, and then he also has Leron on there, who also does tons of like safety, you know, related content when it comes to your technology. So as soon as we hit the stop button. Button here it's going to automatically redirect you into their stream so if you want to keep your channel safe and you want to learn just some quick tips that you can do to ensure that your or i can't say ensure but to minimize your chances of getting oh, hacked and getting your channel taken away kathy fit was also hacked on facebook kathy my oh, face interesting. my facebook was recently hacked too interesting uh, if you got it back uh send me a message somewhere and let me know how you did it i can't get mine back but um, just make sure um, that you go and you participate. Um, as soon as I stop this, like I said, it's going to send you right over there. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for hanging out. D, um, as always, awesome, you know, stream today. Uh, I want my play button. All so right. I know, I know. So um, <laughs> just kidding, I, I don't care. So, <laughs> so, um, so thank you so much for hanging out. Um, awesome time. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drop you into that now um, just so that you can get in there because they've already started it. So I don't want to just keep talking to where you might miss something that will, you know, be like the difference in your channel getting hacked or not. So I'm going to go ahead and end this and just send you over to there. So have an awesome rest of your weekend, and um, we'll see you next time.